from the way it looks, Hayase has completely um, swayed uh, the people of Jananda to oh, to um, to protect Fushi and kill the idol leader na na pinag turn over niya ng rights kasi yun ang yun kasi ang premyo pag pag ikaw ng champion sa tournament na yun she turned over her rights to Tonari so siya ngayon ang gusto patayin ng mga tao so syempre istokwa now she has her way with Fushi then well uh, Tonari and the gang uh, try to rescue him but nope Hayase stops them there. But who comes to their rescue? Fushi himself. He has shown a uh, secret ability of his. The ability to shed off his old body. Habang may lason yung katawan niyang yun, gumawa siya ng panibagong katawan in the form of the mole. So, nakataka siya. Hayase intended to, um, to, to imprison him in, in another location. Pero, yung dinala ng mga tauhan niya, Wala na. Empty shell na. Kumbaga sa... Kumbaga sa butterfly, kukun na lang yun. Wala lang laman. Fushi holds Hayase hostage. And in a shocking twist, sinabi niya kay Hayase na, well, if you want to experiment on me, fine. Pero, dun nagpan out ang camera to, to a brand new scene. Tonari is declaring that she's going to leave the island along with seven probably... Uh, close to 700 other people. Kasama niya doon, syempre, si Pioran, yung barkada niya, si Nando, yung kuya ng isang, yung isang kay, naging kaibigan na nila ng bata, and all the children under 7 years of age. So, object naman yung mga adults. Tika sa mukha yung mga object pa kayo. <laughs> but anyway, on the day of the, um, the Exodus, Hayase, well, Hayase puts Tonari and the gang to sleep. Even Fushi. Pero, as in, gagana pa yung poison kay Fushi. As in. Pero hindi, gagana pa rin yun. But, when Fushi wakes up, he can always shed off that body. So, ang ginawa ni Hayase, ikinulog siya sa isang bottom, parang, no, not exactly a bottomless pit. Pero malalim. Malalim na balon. Yung dunya dun niya tinapon si Fushi. Final scene. Tonari decides to rescue Fushi. At uh, nagpaalam siya sa sa boss niya. Nagpa, uh, I think nagpaalam na rin siya sa captain. At saka kay Nando. Alam nila ang plano ni Tonari. So, she escapes. She escapes from the boat and heads back to Jananda. Talaga naman! Talagang kinarir na ni Hayase ang pagkademonyo niya. Like I told you guys in the last review, Hayase will now be the big bad of this anime. At least for uh, for a good two, and then, one, two, three, for a good three episodes now. Siya talagang pinaka-contrabida rito. Overall, it's another fucking good episode from this anime. Woo! Kaling! To your eternity, maybe one of the most empowering animes of the year, but it also has its um, it also has its share of big bads. Ayan si Hayase. Pace. First two thirds of the episode, it was tense because it involved Hayase. Even that scene we're in, Aluto, she wants to have sex with Fushi. Ew. <laughs> Yeah. That is fucking gross. Knowing the fact na well, baka wala na itong buhay na na Fushi na nakikita niya. Siguro by that time, wala na yung wala na itong Fushi doon. He has already shed off this body. Kumbaga, talagang empty husk na. And she's about to have sex with this. Ugh. Oh. That, that was disturbing, right? And the pacing of this episode made me realize that. Talagang, na-capture ng pacing ng episode na to yung... Okay, that... Uh, how disturbing that moment is 
and how how much of a villainess Hayase has become. Grabe. But the last third may just slowed down kasi pina what you call this? Hinayaan na yung magbigay ng kanyang edict si Tonary. So, yun nga, na-implement yung edict ni Tonary, lahat ng bata age 7 and below, sasama sa kanya. Alis sa sila na Jananda. Right? And of course, kasama si Pioran, si um, Nando, yung kanyang boss, and of course, the, the, ship, the ship captain. Any scene into your eternity that uh, that has Hayase in it, it's always a tense one. Even during episodes... Um, I think between episodes 2 and 5. Yan. Kasi hindi pa siya, ano nun eh, hindi pa siya, what, hindi pa siya napupuruhan ni Fushi nun, okay, as Oniguma. But now, uh, seven, since that day, she has become psychotic as fuck. Again, the pacing made me realize that. Ugh. I hate Hayase. Flow naman. First gear shift is when she declares that um we should protect this immortal. Like Tonari said, she's speaking out of her ass. Tigas ng mukha mo, poprotect mo si, si Fushi. E no episodes 2 to 5, gusto, gusto mo malaman kung bakit siya immortal? Gaga ka? <laughs> I call that a gear shift because clearly, Hayase has just shown us how much of a big bad she can be. Namumuli ka na yung gaga eh. And she was successful. Biro mo, tinurn over niya yung rice niya as island leader kay Tonari. Knowing that whoever becomes the island the island leader well, gets executed by the masses the next day. I think she's well aware of this. Kaya, tinransfer niya kay Tonari. So si Tonari ngayon, ang gusto pagdiskitahan ng mga tao. Why did I call this a gear shift? Because this probably gave Fushi enough time to reassess what he can do. What 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 else uh, what other powers he has he has not tapped into yet. Kasi o nga nilason ka pero uh, you're not you're not human. What else can you do? As proves in the second gear shift. It was the it was uh it was the episode's dream sequence. This was during the time when uh what well, basically uh, he he is knocked out. Physically he can't move but his brain's alive and well. So he he has this dream sequence wherein Pioran, Boosman, si um si Rin, si Shin, even Hayase were in that dream sequence. And even Tonari. So, these three were actually making him decide as to what to do. And, what? Poof! His body shedding power has been used. This is the first time we've ever seen him do this. He discard the luma niyang katawan, then make another. Oh, that's scary. This now tells Hayase that, well, Hayase, you can't kill me. Kahit lasuni mo pa ako nilang beses, I will still, I'll still be out to kill you. Ganun lang yan. <laughs> Proverbially, Fushi is sending a message out to Hayase that no matter what you do to me, your ass will still be mine. Not the other way around. Parang ganun yan eh. Final gear shift is when, well, Tonari decides to go back to Jananda and um, help Fushi out. Kasi, if you would look, if you would look at this gear, this final gear shift, well, nakukonsensya rin si Tonari for all the bad things she's done to Fushi and um, for, for forcing him to enter this tournament and kung hindi lang siya nagpasulsul nun kay Hayase, all of this would not happen. Now, now that she's uh, off the island, Hayase is now in control. She's now also in control of Fushi. So, she's, well, basically, 
putting the blame all on herself. She's holding herself accountable for this. So that's probably why she decided to uh, to help Fushi out. So bumalik siya ng Jananda with the help of her boss, and, uh, and probably yes, the team, uh, the ship's captain, na tulong siyang tumakas. These three gear shifts that I saw, yes, will play a role in the um, uh, oh, the final three episodes of this anime. I got a, I got a really good feeling that these three gear shifts can be looked back to when something happens in these last three episodes, in in the final three episodes, which is upcoming, of course, as of this recording. Aya, gear shift yung mga yan. Very crucial gear shifts, I might add. Plot wise, malinis. You know, especially when they um when they pan to Fushi's dream sequence, how seamless it was. Kasi habang nagdi dream sequence siya, abay kinakalikot na pala, kinakalikot na pala siya ni Hayase. That sick bitch. Hayase is one of the, well, probably one of the sickest bitches I've ever seen in in, in an anime. She's right up there now. <laughs> eh, eh, kung, kung napanood yung sequence yun, eh, talagang, ba, baka, baka masok ako yun. <laughs> baka, baka maduel kayo eh. Talagang, baano pa, baano pa rin ang ripin si Fushi? What the fuck? She really wants to know the secret to Fushi's immortality. The plot is this clean. Aha! Uh-huh. If you're a long-time anime fan like me, you tend to deep dive. Kasi, ang linis eh. Ang linis ang plot. Kahit merong pinakitang dream sequence and um that scene where, that explainer scene wherein how Fushi escaped and managed to take Hayase hostage that easily, Malinis pa rin ang plot. Kasi, mabilisan ang explainer scene and the dream sequence is, well, slow enough to make us realize that Fushi is in a, is in a mental dilemma right there. Ano ba? Siguro ang mindset din ni Fushi, ano ba? Tatakas ba ako nito? Eh, ano bang? Papatayin ko na ba si Hayase? Or ano? O gusto? O patagalin ko pa kaya ang buhay nito? So, so he decides to use his what well, not so secret anymore ability. Yun nga. He's going to shed his old body in exchange for an, and he can form a new one. Yeah. Proof right there and then that Fushi is an OP character. Imagine. Lasunin mo. Oh, gagawa na siya ng bagong katawan. Puk. Pugutan mo man ang ulo, tutubo na ng bago. <laughs> Tagain mo sa ulo, tatanggalin lang ngayon. Magbubu na uli. <laughs> He's unkillable. Pushy is not human. He's out of this world, actually. What you gonna do now, Hayase? What you gonna do now, bitch? What you gonna do now? She's a demonic bitch. And the plot will make you ask, ask her those kinds of questions. Deep dive. So, pace, flow, and plot, uh, they came together. Okay, they came together for this episode. Giving us another great episode from this anime. Wow. So, to your eternity, episode 17. Mm. Thumbs up. If this streak continues up to your eternity, It'll probably be those one, one of those animes that got a perfect record from me. I mean, as in, no rating lower than two thumbs up per episode. Kasi, episode one pa lang, two thumbs up na sa akin to. Wow. Painit na ng painit ang road to the finale. And we're now down to just the final three episodes. Ano pa kaya, ano pa kaya mangyari, no? <laughs> Will Hayase still have her way with Fushi? We don't know yet. Will Fushi be... Well, will Tonari be able to rescue Fushi? That's still up in the air. Kasi 
pabalik pa lang siya. So, we'll just have to find out. So again, to your eternity, episode 17. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this great anime, mga lifestyle. Next episode has been teasered. Ooh! Mukhang... Mukhang meron na... Meron na namang problema ang sasalubong kila po siya to na ririto ah. <laughs> Alright. Let's... Let's just... Wait for next week and watch that episode. In the meantime, mga ka-lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. It's an aftermath episode. Pero, the Kiriharas were interviewing um, Masayuki's mother, si, si Mrs. Tachibana. Then, nalaman nila through her backstory na talag- talagang uh, naging best friend niya si si Shoko Futami they they used to be classmates in high school then one day bigla na nawala si Shoko so it's been years later then she she was mailed Shoko's notebook that she first saw when Shoko was working on it and it had this weird writing, but somehow she understood what what Shoko wrote down in that notebook, and it was actually ordering her to to go to this shrine and uh, and stay there. Akala niya na sa sa shrine na yon. It was just the next day. That it was three months ago na. Wow! Ito naman si Mike. Yung isang kasama nilang mga Kirihara Hanggang ngayon, hindi ba nininiwala na uh, That there are psychics among them What? Now to just display this power for Mike and uh, But unfortunately, the leader saw it differently Final scene Ayun Hinaras na silang dalawang magkapatid uh, And they're forcing now to do their bidding uh, The Free Speech Alliance Hino hosting sila ngayon si Naoya. Then uh, I think uh, in a in a mere moment I think okay, I think Naoya reached out to the Korokis. Uh, probably asking for help. Then um, suddenly Yuya read this quickly. Pero may may nakita rin siyang events na probably mangyayari pa. As pa, probably as part yeah it really looks like Naoya's message to him then um, all of a sudden then um, the camera pans to the commander yung unit commander nila and pinapa pinapagana na ang plano wow three crucial moments in one final scene overall Yes, it's a fucking good episode. Although after Matt Cena, pace. First two, first half of the episode, if you've watched that episode, you can actually feel it in your bones that this is an aftermath episode. And well, uh, with quite an intriguing backstory to uh, to enhance it. Then the second half came along. Oi, medyo tense na. Eh, yung pala, may hidden agenda pala ang leader ng Free Speech Alliance sa, sa Kirihara Brothers. Particularly, si Nauto. Most especially when Nauto displayed his power just to convince Mike that psychics actually exist. Yun na, unfortunately, the leader of the Free Speech Alliance saw this, ayun. Uh, pinagana na yung balak niya sa, sa, sa mga Kirihara. Uh, ano kung madadami pa mga kuroki rito sa balak niya the pacing will make you realize that based on the pacing things will heat up in the next episode ano naman natin lahat na hindi nang titisro ang anime na to everything's up in the air as to what the grand plans of the SWE and the Free Speech Alliance have for uh, the Kurokis and the Kiriharas respectively flow naman First gear shift here that I saw was um, Mrs. Tatibana's backstory. The, the whole of it. 
this is a no-brainer gear shift because Soko Futami is obviously a psychic and a, uh, look like, looks like she's a powerful one at that. She can write in cryptic language. She can see the future based on her notes dun sa, uh, sa sinulat niya, sa notebook niya. She, she can actually see the future in all indications. Right? But there are, uh, but there are glimpses that, that she is still alive. Akala na ng iba na patay na siya. Bottom line, this gear ship proves to us all that Shoko Futami is a powerful psychic. Imagine, 2014, yung unang pagkikita nila ni Mrs. Tachibana. Then, she would foresee 2041 happening na. At madalas siya magpakita sa mga Hirihara. And, once pa nang siya nagpakita sa mga Kuroki. But, I think she has she has uh, showed herself to the to the Kiriharas at least at least three times already, and we're just five episodes in. She is guiding for now the Kiriharas into uh, meeting meeting her uh, meeting her best friend. Kaya si kanila siguro pakitul naman itong kaibigan ko, right? Her son is in danger. The SWE is after her son. Parang ganun yung pinaparating niya sa mga Kirihara. Parang ikaw nga nakanta ng Spice Girls. Friendship never ends. Second gear ship is, well, Nato. Um, this proves Mike's claim that psychics don't exist. Mm. Pinakita niya yung power niya. He's a really powerful telekinetic. Imagine, kumuha siya ng limang, na, ng limang tubo and and have it attack Mike like that? Wow! <laughs> you do not mess with Naoto Kirihara. That's a hard lesson Mike has learned right now. And unfortunately, this gearship also has also shown us how um, opportunistic the leader of the Free Speech Alliance is. Although, what? Mike, may pinag na siya sa, sa, sa cost niyang ito. He too is a victim of this corrupt government. Well, he, ha he has reason to believe that this government should be put down. He has a point. Pero, he probably will do anything and everything to achieve that goal. Even control psychics like the Kiriharas. That gear ship has shown us all how, uh, how corrupt the leader of the Free Speech Alliance is. Corruption versus corruption? Ooh, I like... Kulang uh, na popcorn. I really want to see these two go at it. Final gear shift, the third one, is when... Um, ayun nga, the final scene. So, the Kiriharas get, uh, become hostages of, the, of, this, uh, of this rebel movement. But at the same time, Naoya sends a message to the Korokis through Yuya, of course. Well, Yuya's the mind reader here. Basically, Naoya is an empath. He is not telepathic. He is not a mind... No, he's not into... Uh, he doesn't control minds. He just senses emotions. Pero, through that, may nakakita siya ng mga future events. He, rely, he relied on his, on his powers of empathy to... To send that message to to uh, to, to any uh, to any telepathic psychic out there. Ayun, umabot kay Yuya, kay Yuya Kuroki. This gear shift tells me that Naoya is a powerful psychic in his own right. It's not just Naoto. His powers of empathy has uh, is at a whole new level. Kumbaga, he, he can send out this kind of a uh, to whom it may concern type of message that they're in trouble. Unti-unti nang uh, nagpapakita ng lakas sila Nauto and Naoya individually. The Korokis, uh, you ask me, they're lagging behind. Si Takuya, hindi ba niya talaga in full control of his powers? Si Yuya, nag-uumpisa pa lang. 
if the Kirihalas and the Korokis were, go, were to go head to head right now in this episode, wala. No match ang mga Korokis. They'll, they'll get decimated. <laughs> and these three gear shifts will make you realize that. So in conclusion, these three gear shifts will play a, a huge role in this anime. And we're not done with the first half of its run kasi episode 6 is yet to air. Ganito na kalalim ang, ang deep dive natin sa anime na to. Five episodes in pala, mga lifestyle! Now, plot-wise, malinis. Although, um, it has a, um, a rather slow but bizarre backstory, malinis pa rin ang plot. Hindi rin nila, pita, hindi, hindi rin nila pinatagal ang... Uh, ang focus ng tao sa backstory na yun. They quickly went uh, they, quick, they quickly went back to the present to um, to the timeline of the present which is 2041 para makita ng mga tao kung uh, yung facial expressions ng characters of course and for the viewers to judge whether Naoto's line of questioning is within is within uh, is within ethical bounds or not. That's what the plot will make you realize. It is that clean. Walang kuskus balungos dito. No, sli- no sleeper moments. Even that, uh, even that Shoko Futami backstory, I almost did not blink to that backstory. Personally, I am fascinated by this character, si Shoko. Talagang mukhang, sabi ko, mukhang malakas sa psychic to ah. She can see the future. She can send messages to specific psychics. And she's also probably telekinetic and empathic. Like the Kiriharas. Maybe she can also produce um, EMP fields like Takuya. She can, she can probably even read or even control minds like Yuya and Kimi respectively. God knows how powerful Shoko Futami is. All throughout these five episodes, she, she has been giving hints as to um, as to the extent of her powers. Gotta admit, mga lifestyle, it is rather scary. Oh, teka, mag deep dive tayo right now. Uh, the the plot the plot made me the plot made the plot is making me deep dive right now into this. Okay, so Mrs. Tachibana spent three months inside a shrine secluded. Akala niya kasi isang araw lang nung lumabas siya. But no, it's three months. This is probably the same three months that the Kirihara brothers spent in that laboratory. The Kiriharas and Mrs. Tachibana were unaware of what happened during those three months. Yung disasters, yung gera that led to this corrupt government. That led to this totalitarian government they are in now. Nakatakot, ano? Akala mo secluded ka for just a day? The moment you step out, it's, a, it's already been three months. And if you're a lab rat, as in the case of the Kiriharas, time stops. Kaya paglabas mo, it's been three months na. Yung pagtakas mo pala. So the moment, so the day na tumakas ka, it's already been three months. Looks like Shoko has foreseen this already. It's preparing everyone concerned for a somehow big psychic event that's going to happen. I can never tell. Shoko Futami, okay, based on what I've re- based on what I've seen in the plot, Shoko Futami. It's this anime's Nostradamus. Mm. Pace, flow, and plot, they all work together. Despite it being basically an aftermath episode. We start, it started as an aftermath episode. Pero, second half, oi, mukhang, mukhang nagkaka, nagkakakita na ng ulterior motives dito <laughs> Ang bawat um, paksyon who wants that that wants to employ the services of psychics to to achieve their goals. 
grabe. Episode 5 is probably one of the best Aftermath episodes I have ever seen. At least for this anime season. So, Night Head 2041, Episode 5. Isipa Oh. Ooh, two thumbs up. Excuse me. Let's compare this anime with Psychopaths muna. Parehong legit na cyberpunk anime ang dalawa. So, okay. Psychopaths is also, also has a dystopic society. Wherein, um, a mere thought can spell the difference between uh, freedom and jail or even death dito naman sa Night 2041 if you think about um, fiction you think uh, if you imagine things you can already get arrested or even executed by your fellow citizens as in the case of uh, what happened to yeah, the head of the free the free speech alliance during uh, when he was younger. Parang this topic of society, and but compared to psychopaths, psychopaths has the more outrageous technology, obviously. Pero uh, the the high technology is there. They have computers that detect psychic activity within the brain. Pero hindi nila pinapaalam sa sa publiko ito. Uh, the SWE, ah, I'm talking about the SWE. They have this kind of technology. If you're a psychic, you are either incarcerated or be forced to work with them. Pero, in the case of the Kurokis, they are thankful to the SWE kasi isinalbasin na nito mga, nung mga bata pa sila. So, as a, well, as a thank you gift, they pledge, their, they pledge their loyalty to the SWE. At that, at that young an age. So, mga bata pa lang sila, tinitrain na sila bilang mga enforcers. We all know now that the SWE is secretly training psychics in their ranks. Even forcing some enforcers to become psychics. That's where the technology becomes disturbing. Characters with... with personal issues. What? Both the Kurokis and the Kiriharas have personal issues to, to deal with. Of course, we all know, the Kiriharas were former lab rats. They escaped. And the Kurokis, they saw their parents die. Uh, they, saw their, they saw their parents getting killed by um, rogue psychics. In Psychopaths, uh, even the enforcers have their personal issues. If you're going to make me choose between Psychopaths and this one, Psychopaths na ako. <laughs> Psychopaths na ako. But... I'm not telling you, mga kalaysa, that this is, uh, this is a bad anime. Nope, far from it. Nighthead 2041 is right now, I'm saying it right now, one of the best this season. Kaya, if you're missing out, you're acting like an idiot because you're missing out on a great cyberpunk anime. So again, Nighthead 2041, episode 5. Isip po eh, binigay na nga rating eh. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime, Maka Lifestyle. As usual, no teasers. <laughs> what do we do? Of course, we do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Doon na natin malalaman kung ano ang mangyayari sa mga Kirihara at Kuroki. So in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest, Maka Lifestyle. Well, after a two-week break, Shaman King is back! We picked up where we left off. Sinalubong, sinalubong ni Hao ang grupo ni Ana. Well, let's just say Hao tried to make advances on Ana. Well, we all know kung gano ka maldita si Ana. Hao was able to block her right hand, but she has another hand left. Pak! <laughs> Sinampal niya si Hao. And basically, she left how wondering what happened. It's proof talaga na walang wala walang sinasanto ang pagiging maldita ni Ana. Now, Team Yo was finally able to reach the Patch Village. But 
they went through some sort of test to to see if they are worthy to advance in the next round individually so ang nakapasa si Yo si Horo Horo si Ren and Ryu ang hindi ba nakakalabas si Lizard but if you've seen the episode looks like him seeing um, the true form of the great spirit mukhang may adverse effect sa kanya he had that really disturbing look in his eye now let's cite what on how Ren reacted to upon on how Ren reacted to upon seeing the great spirit yung true form niya and he said let's go for this something to that effect so while they were waiting for the others to uh, the other competitors to come in so nagliwaliw muna ang tropa nagliwaliw muna they went for souvenirs and ito namang si Ren he he scouted the other competitors eh, ganyan naman yan eh Ay, ganyan naman yan eh then they met what well, basically the newest member well, another member of house inner circle has made his appearance si Chokolav <laughs> he also has his guardian spirit uh, his name is Mick the Jaguar he's eh, pakilala siya and nagpresenta siya na, so, na 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 maging member ng team ni Yo dahil mahalaga pala yung impormasyon na na hawak niya right? because, because this is Uh, this is his power as a shaman. He gathers key information. So, sinabi niya kay Laren that from this point onwards, it'll be a tournament of three on three. Kung maga, hindi pwedeng uh, yung buong barkada, yung buong barkada ng team Yo ang sasabak. It has, on, it has to be only a three-man team. So, whoop! Lumabas na pagka-opportunista ni Ren. He forms his own team. Kinuha niya si Chocolat at si Horo Horo. At sinabi pa niya sa dalawa, Just stand behind me. I'll do the fighting. Pwede ba yun? <laughs> eh, para mo naman. Para naman, eh, talagang nang iisbon ng ibang sama na ba dito? That's Ren for you. So, Ana just concluded, We're going to be busy. <laughs> <laughs> We are going to be busy. Final scene. So the camera checks on um uh, dalawa pa nila kasama si Manta at saka isang babae. And Manta decided to to look for you. Who does he find instead? Si Faust. Of course, in a wheelchair, incapacitated, we all know, kagagawan ni Ren yun, by the lake singing a song. Ang tanong, ano ang gagawin ni Manta rito? I'll explain in ARD style. Pace. Kasi, no battle scenes here, but the comic relief is still here. Kaya, hindi boring na episode. But it was slow enough for us to, well, to fully appreciate what the Patch Tribe looks like. Hindi pala super old style na Indian tribe pala to. May mga... May, may mga fast food stalls nga eh. May, medyo modern na ha? This is a way better tourist attraction kasi marami siyang perks for the competitors. Ha? May fast food stalls, may souvenir shops, may... Uh, may ang, ang park nga, pang mall eh. Yung ganong ka mod, alas ganong ka modern. The pacing made me um made me appreciate the Pat Tribe even more because over the centuries they have been the guardians of the Great Spirit, or or, or at least its shrine, which uh talagang everyone was at awe, even you. Over the centuries they have also adapted to the times. Ayun nga, uh, nakita natin mga food stalls, talagang modern na food stall ha. Yung as in yung may, katulad na sabi ko kanina, meron silang uh, post-mix machine, yung talagang nagpa-process ng mga soft drinks at saka yung mga drinks. 
Hindi lang pala soft drinks yun. May iced tea, may juice. Fast food talaga ang itsura. In the middle of the desert. <laughs> so, it made me appreciate this patch tribe a little bit more. Akala ko kasi, it's a tribe of stiffs. I said they're just uh, enforcing the rules of the shaman fight. They are overseeing the activities of each competitor shaman. Si Silva nga, tatlo hawak niya eh. Si Yo, si Ren, at si Horo Horo. Silang tatlo. And the pacing will make you realize this. Before the storm, there's a calm. Kasi, hindi pa talaga mag-uumpisa yung second round ng shaman fight. Although, um, everyone, except Lizard, kasi questionable pa siya, have been deemed worthy by the Great Spirit itself. Pasok na sila sa next round. It just, it just goes to, it, it just makes you think, what will be the second round like? Based on Chocolove's information, kailangan 3 on 3. Uh, it, it's a 3 on 3 battle. So, kailangan only 3 shamans per team. Hindi na nagpatumpik-tumpik pa si Ren. Bumuna siya na sarili niyang team. Yo has yet to decide who will complete his team. Kasi, ando na si Ryu eh. Ando na si Ryu. So, siya. So, who will complete his team naman? So, he, he, uh, yeah, he's gonna figure that out. The pacing will make you realize that. Everyone needs to form their own team. Even how. Sa dami ng mga alipores niya, he can form several several three-man teams at once. This is how scary how is. At saka sinabi pa nga, sinabi pa nga pala ni Chocolove dito that the shaman fight has just become a three-faction war. Comprising of how, the Gandara, and the ex loss And, if you're a first-time Shaman King fan, the pacing of this episode will make you realize that. What I just said. <laughs> Flow naman! Well, first gear shift here was um, Big Guy Bill. Yung tauhan ni, ni Hao na sinalban, sinalban nila yo. Na, 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 from, from the X. Na itutumba na sana mga X loss pero nakialam si yo. So, um, he's, a bit, he's a bit thankful. So, as a thank you gift to Team Yo, he gives his own knowledge about about uh, what about what to expect from the actual patch tribe. So, binigyan niya information niya and nagpa nagpa iwan na lang siya do sa bukana. And we also in we also later on in the episode that he is still part of your spa of, of house faction. We ain't seen the last of big guy Bill. Sigurado we're gonna see him down the line in, in this reboot. Pero, yung nakuwang information ni, ni, La, ni La Yo from Big Guy Bill, that helped them tremendously when they entered the, the actual patch village. Big Guy Bill's story checks out. Ganun nga, ang, ganun nga ang makikita nila. That's why I call it the gear shift. Kasi kung di nila sineryoso yung sinabi ni Big Guy Bill dito, eh, baka kung ano pa ang nangyari sa kanila. Eh, baka, baka nangapa sila sa dilim. Second gear shift is when what? Chocolove steps in and presents himself to be another to become uh, a member of Yo's group. At saka sinabi niya na hey, I bring uh, some, something to that effect. I bring value to any team kasi marunong ako mangarap ng informasyon. Key information. Sinabi niya lahat, kinuwento niya, na ganito ang ganito, 3 on 3 battle, and uh, the Shaman Fight is become a 3 faction uh, struggle. Nga. Yo was able to process all this information and figured, okay, your story checks out. Sige, sama, sama ka sa amin. <laughs> but, um, right there and then, binuna rin ni Ren yung kanyang sariling team yun, which comprises of him, Chocolove, and Horo Horo. Alam naman natin lahat mga Shaman King fans, kung gano, what, how much of a, how much of a selfish dick Ren is. <laughs> Dito niya pinaira sa episode na to. But, we still love Ren. He's one of the, uh, what's called this? He's one of the, 
is one of this anime's most memorable characters. And we he's and he's shown us why in this episode. So that's why I called it the gear shift. Because bottom line, it's a gear shift because another member of Yo's inner circle has made his appearance. Ayun nga, si Choco Love. <laughs> he eventually joined uh, he, had, he eventually joined Yo's inner circle in the fight against Hao. Final gear shift. Atlo. Is when uh, you can say it's a post credit scene pero final scene pa rin yun. It's when Manta uh, sees Faust again. Hmm. Although he is the weakling uh, Sigurado hindi makakalimutan yung gino ni Manta yung ginawa sa kanya ni Faust. I'm sure it is still fresh in his mind right now. Okay, that, that was a very disturbing sight. That is how to call this how devious Faust is when he eventually joined uh, Yo's inner circle. What is Manta going to do now? Eh, yun talong dito eh kasi nag Nakita niya uli si Faust eh. Ano kaya ang gagawin ni Manta dito? Now that, now that he's seen Faust like this, we all know kung bakit siya, bakit siya na baldado. Okay? It's because of one guy, si Ren. Ren incapacitated Faust in that episode. Eh, I think episode 6 yan. That was the final scene of episode 6. Yung pagkakabaldado ni, ni Ren kay Faust. And that's why He's now confined to a wheelchair. But he is still uh, one of the competitors. He's still a shaman. So his magic is still there. Gumagana pa yun. Although, well, he can't fight physically. He's in bad shape. If you've seen seen this episode, yep. Talagang mukhang incapacitated talaga eh. Eh, oh, bakit, bakit pa siya nandito sa shaman fight eh? I don't know why he's still here. Why did I call this a gear shift? Because... There's an old grudge to be settled. And that's between Manta and Faust. That's the way I see it. Kasi talagang nasak si Manta kanina nung uh, I was watching the episode. When he saw Faust again. So, there's some unfinished business for Fa- for Manta to do against Faust. But, how's he gonna do it? He's not a shaman. <laughs> These three gear shifts that I saw will play a role down the line in this reboot. Alam ko. <laughs> Alam ko. Especially the first two. Kasi sinabi na rin ni... Si, sinabi na rin ni Ren that down the line, they will be facing each other. And uh, the way... And by the way, he scouted the other... Uh, the other shamans in the... Uh, who's, who are now in the actual patch village with them. And sinabi... I haven't found any worthy opponents yet. So, ibig sabihin nun, um, compared to them, mga pipitugin lang ang mga to. <laughs> mga, um, on this, mga rip-off. <laughs> They're just rip-offs. So, ika nga rin siguro ni Ren, knowing how Ren thinks, Hindi ubra sa ating hindi ubra sa ating hindi ubra sa ating apat to ito mga to Rob. and he's very confident that uh, their group um, they're gonna have a have an easy time in the next round pero the monkey wrench has been thrown in the plan courtesy of Choco Love's information so medyo nagbago na ihip ng ne ne nagbago na ihip ng akin nagbago na yung point of view ni Ren. So, ganun pala. 3 on 3. Eh, apat kami. Teka. Apat. Aha. So, lima. Okay. Amin si, eh, Ikaw niya siguro. Pukunin ko na si Chocolab at si Horo Horo. O. Oh, isang, isang team na kami. <laughs> eh, si Yo naman ang inula ngayon. <laughs> so, just goes to show you how, how, how devious Ren can, can be too. He leaves with his own team, leaving Yo with just one member of his team. 
Kasi kung, kung iti-three on three mo, kinulangan na si Rin eh. Ah, kinulangan na si Yo. He only na, he now only has Ryu. <laughs> si Ryu Nosuke. Hindi naman ka, si Ana kasama nga niya, pero hindi siya, hindi kasali sa shaman fight si Ana. Kumbaga, handler. That's Yo. That's, he, he's the main protag of this show. Yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna figure it out. He's gonna figure it out. Plotwise. Malinis. The moment Anna slapped How, that's the time I totally figured out that uh, oh, the plot of this episode is going to be really, really clean. Because right there and then, um, ini chapuera na si How. <laughs> In a way, only Anna would know. <laughs> si Nabal. And I am, oh, I'm absolutely shocked at How. Hindi niya ginantihan ng hindi niya ginantihan nito. Hindi niya ginantihan. Uh, knowing uh, knowing his short temper. Yeah, how has a short temper. It's what makes him uh, intimidating to other shamans. Kaya ang ginagawa ng mga ibang shaman, sumasama sa kanya. Out of fear yun. So if anything is fear based, it is not going to last long. That is an accepted principle in life. Tandaan niyo yan. Mmm, deep dive. And that's what the plot made me do. <laughs> the plot was that clean. So, clean enough for uh, for us seasoned anime fans, so to speak, to to do a deep dive in the episode. So, pwede na natin himay-himayin ngayon. Mas madaling himay-himayin ang isang episode pag ganito kalinis ang plot. Kung planchado, medyo you'll have to you'll have to deconstruct that episode first. But here, you can slice a piece. Okay, deep dive. You can slice a piece, deep dive. Slice a piece. Nope, no deep dive. <laughs> Ganon yan. Here's another reason why the plot is clean. There's a continuity to to be followed. Kasi nandula sila sa Patch Village, and you can also say it's an it's an aftermath of Team Yo's encounter with the ex loss. Nakas, nakas sa grupo ex loss. There was a, there was a, there was one moment here when Anna was being sold this um this patch doll worth 380 US dollars. Kasi nasa US sila. Eh. Ang ipinabay ba naman ni Anna 380 yen? <laughs> sabi ni sabi ni sabi ni Yo. Hoy, wag ka naman pa chip dito. <laughs> Gumano? Gumano bigla yung si, si, sila Reynos kit horror horror. Sa <laughs> Oh, hindi chip yan ah. Ano ko noon sabi nga, ay ko na man ano. Oh. Ang laki ng hirap ng mga craftsman ng ng patch na gawin yan. Really dito na lang yan. Isawi naman ni Ana. It's just a keychain. <laughs> That's the comic relief right there. That is the comic relief. The plot was so clean you can fully Uh, get the point of that comic of that comic relief, and it came from the from the from the from the unlikeliest of characters, si Ana pa. <laughs> Yung kanya pagiging makunat pa sa inuyat yan. Pinakita niya rito. Pinakita niya rito kanya pagiging kuripot. <laughs> Maldita na kuripot pa. <laughs> the plot was that clean, so you you get to enjoy. You get to enjoy the features of an episode that makes this episode a Shaman King episode. Pace, flow, and plot. Mm-hmm. I couldn't tell one from the other. For uh, for an episode like this, pero ang naging I got one complaint for this episode. Maybe they should have um. The pacing might have might have gone smoother. Kung uh, what's it call this? Kung nalaman natin kung ano yung napanaginipan ni Lizard. If you've seen the episode, talagang he he had that disturbing look on his face. Kasi talagang nakita niya ang Great Spirit, so he had these uh, he had these dreams. So pero hindi na pinakita yon. May mention din kasi si Silva uh, in that episode na 
um, depending on the shaman's upbringing, the great spirit will show if you are worthy. Parang, parang ganun yung sinasabi niya. Something to that effect. Siguro pinakita ng great spirit kay Lizard that Lizard is not worthy. He should not be here. Uh, because that's that's the way I am interpreting that look on his face. Mukhang merong ipinakita, ipinakita sa kanya ng great spirit that will compel him to to boot himself out of the tournament. To boot himself out of the shaman fight. Pero, sinabi na rin ni, ni Lizard very clear uh, during uh, during the first third of the episode I have come this far to kill how so isa na ibig sabihin nun isa, he has no intentions of of uh, quitting on his goal so, let's just say that um, based on the original series this is one of the motivational factors Lizard had in eventually joining the ex loss Ah, ako na nagsasabi sa inyo. <laughs> it's a reboot. It's a reboot. And there's no such thing as no spoilers, please, when it comes to me and the ARD. Yeah, sinasabi ko na sa inyo ngayon. So, pace, flow, and plot, again, I could not tell one from the, I could not tell one from the other. It's a really good episode. Although, no, there were no battle scenes, but, um, the information we got here, it's a treasure trove already. Yung kwento ni Big Guy Bill at yung kwento naman ni Chocolove. Both stories will work to your advantage. It, it, takes, it takes time for him to process. Lalo siyang team leader dito. So it'll take time for him to process everything. But oh, he's gonna get there. He's gonna get there, okay? Just, just the main pro tag on that. So, Shaman King 2021, episode 18. Yeah. These are two thumbs up. Bucket. I was, um, based on what I saw in this episode. Parang gusto ko nang bigyan ng one thumb up lang eh. Pero, kinonsider ko yung fact na may natulungan sila yo dito na tauhan talaga ni How na bumalik pa kay How ah. So talaga nagpakita na siya ng utang na loob by providing team yo this kind of information. And of course, the the, the now, the entrance of Choco Love mm, eventually became eventually joined Yo's inner circle he's, act, he's actually in the inner circle now kasi in a, si Yo na mismo nag-accept sa kanya so down the line the information we have uh, we found out here will help team Yo tremendously at yung pagkakapasok ni Choco Love mind you guys in the impending battle against How Yung information gathering skills ni Chocolove magagamit magagamit niyo dito. And he doesn't need to coax Chocolove to do it. He, he, he didn't he, he didn't he didn't uh, coerce Chocolove to to gather some information. Nope. Pakiusap lang. Simple pakiusap lang ang gagawin niya. All you needs to do in well, it's, it's what he does. It's what, it's what he it's what he actually does. Deliberately, all right. De- deliberately is to place faith in people. Uh, he put his faith in Ren. That's why he's that's why he's now a companion of his. He put his faith in Horo Horo. Mm, inner circle. Dalawa na sila. He put his faith in Ryunosuke. Yo's faith in him help Ryunosuke become a shaman tremendously. Yun talaga yung naging motivation ni Ryunosuke to become a shaman. Kaya, um, kaya, siya na mismo nagpresenta sa lolo ni Yo. Please train me. What do I need to do 
para maging estudyante nyo. Siya na mismo lumapit sa lor niyo. And we all know how much of a slave driver Yo's grandfather is. So, being, being, of course, being the patriarch of the Asakura family. Sabi niya siya, Teka muna, bakit? Sino ka ba? Outsider ka eh. Ba't kita tuturuan? <laughs> Ang tinuturuan ko lang, apo ko at yung anak ko. <laughs> Ba't kita tuturuan? So, so, well, Rinosuke had no problem with that. Kung ano sinabi ng Lord Nyo na gawin, ginawa niya. All because of Yo putting his faith in him. That's motivation. Okay, that is a motivational factor. That's why, well, deep dive. That's what, that's what this episode will make you realize. On Yo's ability to put faith in people. That's why these uh, the shamans that are around him right now, they're really good ones. Uh, well, except for Chocolate. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what he can do here in the reboot. <laughs> I don't know what he can do here, he can do here in the reboot. We have yet to see the goods from Chocolate. All we know is how he uh, gathers information. So ikaw niyo. Mukhang hmm. usefully yung info mo ngayon. O oh, sige, sali ka na sa amin. <laughs> Ganun lang yun. So again, Shaman King 2021, episode 18. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this people, mga ka-lifestyle. Excuse me. Time for the next episode has been teasered. I don't, know the title. I, don't, I don't seem to remember that kind of a title in the, uh, in the original series. But anyway, tandaan nyo, the reboot is following the manga to the letter. Kaya, expect changes from the original storyline of the anime. Ako, I'm mentally ready for that. Or, they're going to add new scenes to for the reboot. Na, sa reboot lang makikita. Me, I'm pretty excited. How about you guys? So wait for next week and watch that episode. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Hmm. Tuloy pa rin ang mga, well, ang mga antics ni Sato ko. Bottom line of this episode is for the um, for the for nearly the entire episode, she is taking her uncle Tepe for a fool. Talagang ginago niya buong episode ang ang uncle niyang to. Basically, napapaniwala na rin ni Sato ko that she's being abused by by her uncle si Tepe. Final scene. Basta na lang pinakita si Yuwa, natatawa sa lahat ng ginagawa niya. Most especially, this crying scene. I remember this crying scene from season 1 so... Like, like, it, like it was just yesterday na napanood ko. She found this one most amusing talagang. She was laughing her ass off to this scene. Ta- talagang... It really goes to, it really makes you think on who's who's the real villain in this, uh, in this particular season of Higurashi. Overall, it's another fucking good episode. Like you was said in this episode, she's not Satoko is not human anymore. She's a witch. <laughs> Peace. Ever get that feeling that every time Satoko is involved? There's always a tense moment. <laughs> Yun na nararamdaman ko rito. Starting with this episode. Talagang, the pace will make you realize that. The pacing will also make you realize that hindi lang si Tepe ang ginagago niya rito. Pati sila, Keiichi, everyone in the village. She's painting a story for each side. Naghihibla siya ng kwento for well, on the side of the entire village, she's also painting an, an entirely different picture for her uncle to see. 
You know what? That uh, that scene where she she was rolling in the ground, tapos nag uh, nagpadumi siya talaga sa putikan sa sa palayan. That is fucking disturbing. Napa napati napatingin nila ako sa pader na ganon. Eh. The pacing of this episode was so good. Talagang it will it will make you uh, it will make you immerse into every scene Satoko is in. Flow naman. First gear shift is Satoko started rolling herself on the ground. Then uh, yun nga, bumangon tapos nagpa talaga nagpadumi siya sa puti sa sa lupa at saka sa putik ng palayan. Why did I call it a gear shift? Because later on in the episode, ayun, pinalabas niya na na uh, mukha na, na, na talagang may kumuyog sa kanya. And she really made her uncle believe that that was so. Nope. Sorry Tepe. You should open your eyes. Your own niece is playing you for a fool. Well, this gear shift also shows you how evil Satoko is now. Disturbingly evil, okay? For 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 a, for a nine-year-old to do all these things. <laughs> Second gear shift. It was during the call made by Child Welfare, Welfare Services on the Hojo, on the Hojo household. There is also a scene like that in in season one. Kano na ganon halos, except for this one. Ang unang tumanggap ng call ay si Tepe. After a few moments, inago na sa kanya ni Sato ko. Then right there and then, ayun kinausap na ni kinausap na ni Sato ko ang child welfare pre, child welfare services. Na everything's alright here. No need to worry. Hindi naman ako hindi naman ako inabuso ng uncle ko. We're we're all good here. At naniwala naman ang child welfare services. Hmm. Pati sila ginago ni Sato ko. And final gear shift is when Yuwa was observing this uh yeah. Um I would I would never forget this um this scene from season 1 na talagang hinawakan lang siya ni KG ni si Sato ko. Hinawakan lang siya ni tinapik lang siya sa ulong ganun nagwala na siya. She broke down. She threw a chair at at KG. Then she just Wow. When I first saw this scene from season 1, talagang it was really disturbing. Talagang talagang I found this scene really disturbing even up to now. It is more disturbing now kasi nanonood si Yuwa, enjoy na enjoy. <laughs> She's enjoying all of this. This gear shift will really make you think Who is the real villain in season 2? Mukha may dahilan kung bakit binigay binig binigyan niya si Sato ko ng ganitong kapangyarihan. Maybe she's she's that bored as shit, okay? Binigyan siya. Oh, bigyan oh, i oh, bigyan kita ng kapangyarihan ng ito. Bahala ka na. Just entertain me. These three gear shifts, absolutely, mga ka lifestyle, will play a role in the prob- yeah, more likely in the second half of season 2's run. Tandaan niyo, this is episode eight. It is the midway point of season two. Kasi it's a 15 episode run. Kaya episode eight is the midway point. So, wow, uh, what a way to. Justify this one as the midway point. Tatlong mabibigat na gear shift ito. These three gear shifts also has also shown us how. Well, let's just say, Satoko's evil knows no bounds already. Pwede rin. because they because enjoy no enjoy sa panunood si Yuwa. Plot wise, super planchado. Now, hindi natin masasabi na malinis because it. It also took scenes from season one, and wow, uh, it was so well ironed out. If it's your first time watching it, mapagkakaman na yung uh, panibagong eksena to eh. Nope, especially that final scene. Talagang tagmukang bago eh, because we were seeing that scene all over again. This time, from Yuwa's point of view. Uh, 
Oh, wait, no, you could see now. She is absolutely amused with this. It made the scene more disturbing, Maka lifestyle. Dabe. The Higurashi reboot has it has made it its trademark of of uh, airing well ironed out scenes, especially this one, season two. It, if it's your first time, if it's your what, well, if it's your, if it's accidentally your first time watching the Higurashi reboot. But nope. That means you haven't seen season one yet. Kaya, I'm gonna repeat it right here in this review. Do not watch season two until you have seen the entire season one. Because there will because it will show because here it will show some scenes from that season. Only this time from a different person's point of view. Ito nga, sa final scene. Best example. We saw this scene again. But, through Yua's eyes. Nakakakonsensya. Because we are suing, because we are seeing this scene again, but through another person's eyes. Uh, which made it really disturbing. <laughs> it's a well-ironed out plot. It's a plot only Higurashi can, can pull off. Pace, flow, and plot Yep, they all work together for this episode, giving us another great one. I'm gonna repeat this as many times as I have to. Review for review. Do not watch season two if you haven't seen season one. Yun lang, yun lang power tip ko sa inyo para lang yung magets ang buong season two so far. So, Higurashi Sotsu. Episode 8? Isip pa ako eh. <laughs> oh! Thumbs up! Excuse me. You may find it disturbing, but... I am slow. I am uh, I am now enjoying... Uh, the POV style of Season 2. Kasi... Tandaan ninyo. This is all... Satoko's doing. We are viewing season two at the pleasure of Satoko. And of course, sometimes and sometimes through Yuwa's eyes. Like in kanina, sa final scene ng episode na to. And there are also some scenes where in talagang pinapakita ang, ang kasamaan na ni Satoko dito. Or scenes where in no one is looking, where in she's all by her lonesome. Wherein she's about to um, enter a familiar scene from season one. Anything, any scene that Satoko is in has become disturbing as fuck. <laughs> the Daniel lifestyle. Especially next week, we're, we are about to enter the second half of this season two. Expect. The scenes to be more disturbing and expect the um well just like in episode 6 expect these scenes to become more brutal we all know what happened in episode 6 <laughs> expect the brutality to go up another notch come the second half of this of season 2's run expect yun na yan. so again Higurashi Sotsu Episode 8 mm. Two thumbs up Another two thumbs up for this anime Maka lifestyle In typical Higurashi fashion Final of the next episode has been teasered Tandaan nyo, We're still in a mini arc We're still under Satoko's pleasure <laughs> So wait for next week And watch that episode Sigurado Deep dive fest na naman tayo in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Probably the most bizarre episode of this anime. Let me explain. This um this uh this big breasted woman that every student is calling Miss Aki. I think she has incited the in not the entire class. Nearly 
the entire class to put all of the blame on Nagara. She proceeds by um, recruiting Asakaze. By um, well, in the in the most suggestive of ways, pushing his face onto her opais. Corruption of minority. <laughs> Despite her instigations, Hoshi is not buying it. Thank goodness. And of course, um, Nagara's usual crew. Si Rashdani, si Nosomi, at si Mizuho. Final scene. This is what happened. Inaccept na ni Asakaze ang offer ni Aki. Looks like the real villain of this anime is now here. Uh, we all thought it was um, Cap during the pilot. We, we even thought it was Hoshi, the, the editor-in-chief of the school paper. Nope. He is he's nowhere near uh, what we've seen in Aki or, uh, or what she has done in this episode. Let's break this down ARD style. Pace. Slow but intense. Kaya, well, fast na rin yun. <laughs> but, it's, um, the slowness correctly captures the, um, the tension that, that Aki has already instigated amongst the, uh, amongst the students. So, because of her evil, tatlong paksyon na to. Naging tatlong paksyon na sila. Of course, uh, the one being led by herself, and of course with Asakaze as her main minion, because um, she got the rest of the class to believe that Asakaze is the savior. He is the actual savior. The second faction is of course Nagara and his, uh, yung barkada nila Nagara. The third faction comprised of Cap and Hoshi and of course the, the student council president. Hoshi himself has trust issues with Aki. So, um, the guy we thought of as the main antagonist of this anime, nope, we were dead wrong. <laughs> because of his uh, choice of allegiances, we can safely assume that he's not, one of, that he's not the big bad here, si Hoshi. It's Aki. Let's go back to um, Aki's faction. It now comprises of Asakaze, si Ace, yan, kasama niya. Okay, talaga napaniwala itong yung buong barkada ni Ace na Asakaze is the real savior. And she has been sent by God to, um, to, to guide them all. Right? Umpisa pa lang, bitchy na ang sinasabi siya. <laughs> right? Right from the, uh, from the final scene of episode 4, she talks like a bitch. And to have her as one of your teachers, nope, sorry. Suspindin niyo na ako from school. Ayoko pumasok sa klase nito. <laughs> I think that's why, um, that would be my reaction to this, um, to this, yep, this, um, now main antagonist of the anime. And the pacing made me realize that. Flow naman. First gear ship was when the first time Aki tried to try tried to recruit recruit Asakaze. She even she even resorted to under the table tactics like pushing his face onto her breasts. <sighs> you don't even do that in a porn film, but she does it here. Natoringa anime pa naman to. But anyway, I call that a gear ship is because, well, through this gear ship, we now see how, um, how evil this lady can get. When no one else is looking, she is, she's trying to pirate Asakaze for herself. She sees Asakaze as the most vulnerable here. Not Nagara. <laughs> not even, no, not even Hoshi. Not even Cap. Not even, not... And I'm sure as hell not Rajdani. I to break this to you guys, but Nagara's actual power is not teleport. Kay ano ito? Kay Kay Asakase. 
okay? It's his actual power. They were actually sent to another world and they're blaming Nagara. Kasi kinakusap nila si Nagara. But, uh, all of a sudden, Asakase opens this pretty big portal and um, they see this, they see the world they got, they got used to. Yun. Nakalabas. And, tinatanong din ni, tinatanong din nila Nozami kasi nagbalikan eh. Tinatanong nila, where's Nagara? Ang sagot niya sa kasi, don't ask me. So, doon nila hinahanap si Nagara ngayon. If it weren't for that gear shift, we wouldn't know where Nagara is or what state he's in. They found him in a really sorry state. Okay? Uh, napansin siyang umiiyak ni Nosomi because he, he was so uh, disappointed with himself he, you can say that pero ni-reassure siya ni, ni, yan, ng, ng talagang barkada niya <clears throat> excuse me his real friends that he is worth something pero binigyan siya ni Mizuho ng reality check that you always feel sorry for yourself then you then you scoff at others as an excuse parang something to that effect so medyo natauwa naman si Nagara sinabi naman niya okay no more running final gear shift is the moment Asakase opened opened that portal uh, doon doon talaga na convince yung iba na si Asakase talaga ang savior and of course this is all due to Aki's instigations. Uh, what's the deal with this bitch? Ano mamabala niya rito? Maybe Hoshi saw something in her that she that he just could not trust. That she that he just could not um bank on. Siguro may talagang may nakita si Hoshi dito na something's off with this teacher. Kaya hindi siya sumama. Uh, hindi siya kumaga hindi siya nakipag-alyansa sa sa aking sa akin na to if it weren't for that gear shift we wouldn't um, figure out which side Asakase is going to take or which side Asakase is going to side it's now obvious that he's well by um, biting into Aki's mind games. Well, we now know that he's officially left um, Team Nagara. We can call that Team Nagara because um, Nagara is Nagara is um, preferably the main protag of this anime. Okay, so we name, we named that uh, that circle of friends Team Nagara. So by um, well, in the final scene, you've seen uh, if you've seen the episode, you've seen the final scene. He has already accepted Aki's invitation to to go with her. So, kumbaga, siya na ang palalabasin ni Aki na savior ng savior ng buong klase. But did you know that if it weren't for the final gear shift, we wouldn't know um, Nagara's true power. Napansin dito ni Rush Dani because they were suddenly on this island that got that got burned down by supposedly Mizuho's power. Your blue flame. You remember that in episode um, episode two or three? I forgot already. Okay, but saying episode na uh, we're in the main case here is the uh, is the blue flame. Yun. Napansin ni Razdan that they were they were. They were on this state of the island again. So, dinijus na so kinungkludo niya kagad. So pinakita niya sa blackboard. Nagara's true power is a teleportation, but the creation of this very same world. So medyo relieved yung relieved ang team Nagara, especially si Nosomi. The world they're in right now, well, and technically it's a paradise, all right? It's a it's a deserted island. Uh, only there and 
Uh, they're the only humans on it, and and a lot of strange things have been. Uh, besides, besides that, a lot of strange things have been happening. This is a para. This is an island paradise, and it's all because pala of Nagara's power. Kumbaga, what? Well, let's just say that Aki inadvertently named this uh, this true power by Nagara escape. Okay, let's 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 give credit where credit is due. Escape is a is a more appropriate name for Nagara's true power. <laughs> so these three gear ships that we saw in this uh, in this episode, especially no 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 no, all three will play a role down the down the road in this anime. Why? Because. Bottom line, the, uh, the real villain of this anime has been introduced and she has already made her presence known. And she's already made an impact for that matter. She has already instigated um, factions between the entire class. Because of her, it's now a three-way, a three-way battle of student politics, basically. Um, team Aki, Team Hoshi, and of course Team Nagara. It's obvious, Aki is employing divide and conquer tactics here to forward her own ambitions and goals. Now we don't know if she has a superpower herself, but oh, the mere thought of it is is scaring the shit out of my brain right now. <laughs> Imagine the big bad of this anime having her own superpower. That's a lot like. Parang parang Dio ang dating nuna. <laughs> parang si Dio ang dating eh. I don't want to think about that right now. Plot wise. Malines. Please consider the fact that in Sunny Boy, anything bizarre can happen. No pun intended, alright? <laughs> Again. Anything bizarre and strange can happen because they got thrown into an alternate dimension, basically, where everyone discovers their own superpower, discovers their own evil, as in the case of Hoshi, and they eventually discover their real friends, and as in the case of Nagara. So, with that in mind. The plot is still clean. Kasi ang gulo. Okay? Ang gulo ng mundo pinasukan ng mga to. And it's not of their own doing. So, hindi mo naman masasabi yung planchado ang plot. The episode only mentioned what Aki said right after the final scene. Hindi pinakita ng final scene eh. Nung, epi- nung nakarang episode. So, it's only right for Madhouse to show those scenes were in uh, what Aki, what um, what Aki said right here, what Aki said right there, what basically what Aki said right after episode 4 ended. Tama lang. Kaya malinis pa rin ang plot. And despite we're having um all this weirdness going on, e binuba naman ang opening scene. Para tayo nasulod ng video game <laughs> Uh, an 80s, uh, a late 70s video game for that matter. It really felt like a late 70s video game. Team Nagara was able to solve this world. At nahuni nila yung culprit. It's a computer mouse. <laughs> but not like this, okay? It's the, um, yung dikable na mouse. Yun, parang ganun yun. It's, uh, it's an, um, uh, an eight, a 90s, okay? A 90s style mouse We're in. No, no ergonomics involved. Just your your palm is absolutely, your hand is absolutely flat, and more likely you're going to get carpal tunnel syndrome for prolonged use. <laughs> That's the type of mouse they were um, they were able to catch. So nilagay nila sa parang mga superpower holdovers museum nila. Pero um, this mouse is oh uh, came in handy because pag kinakabit nila sa computer nila. If there's a problem to be solved, na solve agad. <laughs> wow! Okay. 
A mouse that can think by itself. A mouse that can think for itself. That was weird. And the plot will make you realize that. Grabe. Ganun kalinis ang plot na to. So, pace, flow, and plot. Uh-huh. I had a hard time distinguish, distinguishing the plot and the and the flow from one another. Okay, nakita niyo naman kanina on how I um I was having a hard time deducing the flow right here. Right here and now. It's that great an episode. Episode 5. Bottom line, Madhouse has overdelivered again. So, Sonny Boy episode 5. Deserve nya. Oh, two thumbs up. These kinds of animes are vintage madhouse. If you don't believe me, watch Perfect Blue. <laughs> If you flip to the other side of the coin, you will be glad that there's already a uh, that the main antagonist has uh, has finally showed herself in this anime. Talaga obvious. The way Aki thinks and acts, uh, the way she um, brainwashes these these teenagers, well, she has that power because teacher she. And she's using her teaching skills the wrong way. This is how bad a teacher can get. This is how evil a mentor can get. Uh, although I wouldn't want to call her mentor because. What she what she is teaching and instigating right now? Nope, it is not for the common good. Definitely, I am so glad that Sunny Boy has this kind of a villain in their midst. And I always thought it was Hoshi. Nope. Right now, the big bad is Aki. Say you pagkaka instigate niya sa on on asakase. Na uh, kunwari believe siya believe siya sa ability na sa kasi that he is the uh, the savior. Yun ang pinalalabas niya ngayon to the uh, to the rest of the class. But uh, team Hoshi and team Nagara, nope. They're not buying it. Both factions are not buying it. Team Nagara made that clear. And team Hoshi later on in that uh, in that class In that uh, covered classroom scene, yep, he made his point clear too. My group will not join you. Surprise! Sunny Boy now has its own big bad. So again, Sunny Boy episode five. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime manga lifestyle. Wow, we got a big bad. I don't know what the deal is with these animes that don't teaser the next episode. Most of them are really good. Tokyo Revengers, uh, of course, Sunny Boy, and um, Night Air 2041. And um, for this roster, these three animes are really good, and they don't teaser the next episode. I don't know, parang talaga pin talagang pinasasabik nila ang audience, but. If you want to make the audience return for another episode, you gotta make a really good one. This is the best example, episode five, because I think the main villain has been introduced already. So let's wait for next week and watch that episode. In the meantime, mga ka lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Okay. Nasa bahay na pala sila ni, ni, ni Lord Rotven ngayon. So, they're having this uh, favorite pastry of noise na talagang... He's a sucker for this pastry. I forgot the name. Luca uh, suddenly told Val- Vanitas to apologize for the other day. When he was... Well, well when he forced himself on Jean. So, nagets gets kagad ni Vanitas. Ah, okay. No need to apologize. Lalo na galit si Luca kasi siya ang amo eh. But, pinakita niya ngayon dito yung mark ni Jean. What does that mean? 
Well, if you would look closely, hindi ito yung, yung marka niya rito ngayon. Doon siya kinagat ni Jean in episode uh, in episode 5. Doon siya mismo kinagat sa spot na yun. So, that means only one thing. When a vampire leaves his or her mark on you, it means you're their slave for life. Ito ba namang si Vanitas? He's totally infatuated with Jean. Kaya okay lang. Ngayon, eh, dinukot siya ni Jean at dinala somewhere para mag-usap sila. Alam na ni, ni Vanitas ang sikreto ni Jean that she's been taking medicines for her curse better status. Inoferan siya ng dalawang conditions ngayon ni Vanitas. First, Ano eh, yung second muna. Para, baka masyak kayo sa une. Yung second muna ang pag-usapan natin. The second condition was to not call him human anymore. Paano niya? Vanitas. So, hesitantly, pumayag si Jean. But in the first condition, this is where it gets weird. The first condition was for Jean to only suck Vanitas is blood. Kumbaga, hindi siya hindi siya sisipsip ng ibang dugo kundi yung dugo ni Vanitas lang. Just goes to show you how much of a psycho our main protag is. Wow! And right there and then, kinagat siya uli ni Jean. Mm. And who was witness to all of this in in the shadows? Si Noy. Grabe! It was nightfall nung bumalik na sila sila Vanitas at John. Uh, Tamang-tama, may may social gathering ngayon. So, the band was playing and everyone was dancing. Kinuha bigla ni Domi si John para sumayaw. Gusto niya pala, gusto niya pasilosin si ano, pasilosin si Noy. Ito namang si Noy. Tinanong niya si Vanitas kung marunong siyang sumayaw. Sabi ni Vanitas, I couldn't dance. So, tin- so tinanong uli ni Noy, gusto ba turuan kita? Sabi ni Vanitas, okay. So, tinuruan. Eh, maruno pala sumayaw to, si Vanitas. Yun pala, meron pala siyang question kay Vanitas. His, Noy's question was, what the heck is love? Natawa bigla si Vanitas. But, but let's give him a, a very honest answer. I don't know. But every time I look at Jean, my heart's fluttering, my senses are probably at an all time high, something to that effect. And that's my definition of love. Hmm, okay. So we can now say, yes, you're not like me feeling siya kay. Uh, nope, not not feelings, alright? The way he expresses it, he is obsessed with John. <laughs> and nagpapakagad parate. So, tingin ni Noy ngayon kay Domi. At medyo na, parang nahalata na rin ni Noy na, na pinapaselos siya ni ano, pinapaselos siya ni Domi. So, final scene is, well, uh, Noy and of course, Vanitas, they're preparing to, to, to their courtesy call with Lord Rotvin. So, siyempre, hinahanda siya ni, si Noy, hinahanda siya ni Domi. And the time came, ayun. Then, um, the episode just ended with this bed that has black smoke coming out of it or black mist, parang ganun. It's a scary sight. Let's break it down ARD style, shall we? Face! There were two vampire bite scenes here. The one that involved uh, Vanitas and Jean, and the other involving Domi and Noi. Uh, that was that. Uh, the second one was rather sexy, alright? I find it sexy. The pacing of this episode will make you realize that. Hindi natin mga appreciate ang mundo ng mga vampires kung wala mga kagatan. <laughs> kung wala kagatan ng ngayare. The pacing will also make you understand that biting each other is um, it's a vampire's way of having sex. 
Parang uh, ganun daw yung ano niya, eh, ganun daw yung effect niyan. Like on how vanitas explained the um uh on how pleasurable the experience of Jean biting him, there's a there's a sexual overtone to that. And this was confirmed nung nagkagatan sila Noy at Domi. Right? Nomi was biting Noy here. Noy was biting Domi here. <laughs> in all the uh, in all the uh, vampire literature and all the vampire animes, never have I seen a vampire anime episode this sexually charged. All because of the pacing. You couldn't say it's uh you couldn't say it's fast kasi yung kagatan involved di naman for survival eh. Or to know who's uh to know who's right or wrong. But to well satisfy the other person's sexual feelings and desires. Do you find me weird mga lifestyle? You should. <laughs> the pacing is that weird. Slow but uh, weird enough to make you understand how vampires express their feelings. Bottom line. Flo naman. The first gear shift happened when Jean um, took took Vanitas somewhere else. I thought, so what happened to Jean si Vanitas? What am I talking about? Why did they call it the gear shift? Because that heightened Vanitas' sexual obsession with Jean. Right? Alam naman natin lahat that since episode. Five, he is totally obsessed with this vampire. I say, well, amini man natin o hindi, maganda si Jean. And she's, wow, brutal lumaban to. Right? Just for the sake of her master, si Luca. Kasi siya bodyguard. This sparked Vanitas sexually. Mm. And it also goes to show you how much of a psycho Vanitas is. How, uh, what do you call this? How crazy he is how eccentrically crazy he is, and to think he is the main protagonist of the show. <laughs> it's what makes him uh, an anti-hero. Because iba yung iba yung mindset niya, iba yung psyche niya. Hindi pang ane, hindi pang hero talaga, eh. hindi pang main protag. Uh, you can you can call him an underdog because. He has the most feared book in all of vampire history in his possession. And he is using that to cure vampires of, of their cursed better statuses or even or any illness that that affects only vampires. He's using that book for good. Second gear shift is when, well, that scene between, yeah, Domi and Noi. It shows you loud and clear that Vampires don't need actual sex to express themselves to each other. Kagata na lang tayo. I find it fascinating. Because through this gear shift, vampires have shown us how they, well, how they have sex most of the time. And they don't have to, uh, they don't have to bed each other just to do it. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> Kung kayo'y nawi-weirduhan, okay lang. <laughs> because this is a vampire anime after all. Final gear shift. It's when, well, uh, during the final scene, natatanong na silang dalawa ni Lord Broadbent, si, si Vanitas at si Noy. They're already approaching his, uh, I think, his main building. Yung opisina niya. That gear shift makes you wonder, what? What are Lord Broadbent's intentions with our, uh, with our heroes? Vanitas at Sinoy. Lalo si Vanitas. Okay. He has the book. And I'm very sure Rotven is aware that this is the real book. This is the book of Vanitas. And the Vanitas that is holding it now is not even a vampire. So he, re- I think he really wants to know how, uh, how this Vanitas acquired the book. Excuse me. Hindi porket member ka ng Blue Moon Clan, you're uh, uh, you're now entitled to use the Book of Vanitas. Siguro ganon yung mindset niya. 
I think he really wants to get into the heart of the matter on more likely on this Vanitas' own back story. Right up to now, it's already seven episodes in. We still don't know on how this Vanitas got the book or become a member of the clan of the Blue Moon for that matter. Kasi ako, ina-assume ko, ang Blue Moon clan, puro vampire din to. It is the clan that the first Vanitas started ever since he, he got exiled from uh, from from their world. I'll, I'll be expecting Rotven to uh, to ask those questions to Vanitas. Kasi yun yata yung talagang gusto natin malaman as as viewers of this anime. Ano ba talaga ang Sam, ano ba talaga ang pinanggalingan ng Vanitas na to? How did he acquire the book? How did he become a member of the Blue Moon Clan for that matter since he is human? That's what this gear ship made me realize just now. Hmm? These three gear ships, especially the last one, will play a role at least in the next episode. Handa nyo. We are now in the second half of this anime's run. So, expect crucial twists in uh, in the storyline from now on. Plot-wise, Palinis, there were no backstories that were told in this uh, in this episode. Talaga na concentrate siya sa infatuation ni Vanitas kay Jean and of course noise dumbfoundedness. Yeah, hindi nga niya no, hindi nga niya alam kung ano pag ibig eh. Tinanong pa kay Vanitas. And he's a vampire. He's a vampire. So yeah. Look, for me, if you want if you want to get any power tips on love and sex, just ask a vampire. So the plot will make you realize that it's that clean and you can and there's if the plot is clean there's a there's so much room for a deep dive. Yun ang nagawa natin sa episode na to. Nakapag deep dive tayo. Pero uh, about sex, about how vampires um, have sex. Ang ganon lang yun. Eh. <laughs> the plot was that clean. Kaya rejoice if the plot in an episode is really clean because you get to think these things. You get to. Uh, Overthinking is not prohibited as long as the episode's plot is clean enough. Yeah. Best example, one of the best examples this episode. Pace, flow and plot they all came together in this episode. Giving us another great episode from this anime and what a way to start the second half of this this anime's run. But the real start would probably be in the next episode because based on the final scene, looks like we're going to get our answers, and Lord Rodman is going to help us uh, get those answers. So, the case study of Vanitas, episode seven. Why not? Mm. Thumbs up. So what else should you know about this episode? Nope. Just watch it. <laughs> In all of the um, vampire stories, whether it be um, Dracula, whether it be Interview with the Vampire, you, you guys still remember Interview with the Vampire? And or this anime or vampire or animes like The Case Study of Vanitas. The, there is always a sexual overtone when it comes to vampire stories. It's like it's like vampires are telling us that you don't need to uh, you don't need actual copulation to have sex. Just look at us sucking the blood out of each other. Parang ganon yung ane, parang ganon yung message ng episode dito. It cannot be ignored. The, uh, the sexual overtones a vampire story brings because it's what it's what makes a vamp a vampire story so good 
so believable. It has been like that for centuries. Starting from, of course, the first Dracula novel by Bram Stoker. What, what should we expect in the second half of this anime's one? Of course, number one there is Vanitas' own backstory. Because, Kinwento na Ninoy ang origin story niya. So, it's Vanitas' turn this time. It should be his turn this time. And probably, Lord Rothman will help us get the answers we need. So again, the case study of Vanitas episode 7. Tiklo. Oh, two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up. the next episode has been teasered. Frenchy. But anyway, I still don't trust it because it's a teaser. We'll just do the drill, Maka Lifestyle. We will wait for next week and watch that episode. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Quite a sad ending to it. Let's, uh, let's run it down for a bit. It's been um, a week since since the uh, since the last dreamer they weren't able to save. They've already racked up three at this uh, by the time this episode came around. But while this was going on, Rena saw a uh, a girl watching them. Minapansin siya. So right after the last battle, uh, hinanap niya tong girl na to. And eventually, nahanap niya. At ayos ang usapin. So, she sought help from, from the others para, well, para medyo ma... makoral nilang babaeng ito. But they, they eventually got her to, um, to talk. Her name is Kasuha. And, um, well, her appearances during their most recent battles were actually a, um, a call for help from her. Kasi yung magulang niya, which was the opening scene, they were being hunted down by the church. Sinambong mag-anak. At uh, ang nagpaiwan yung mga magulang niya. So, she's now trying desperately to look for them. And she... She was able to... Well, she was able to contact the knocker-ups. Ito nga, sila, sila Rena. And she told her story. And uh, nalaman natin lahat dito through, through that episode that her parents are members of the church. Pero nung nakita nila na yung katarantado ang ginagawa ng kultong ito, they want out. Pero, sinabi niya, once you're out, once you're in, you can never get out. Typical cult mentality. So, all the all the knockoffs agreed to one thing: they must help this girl uh, rescue her parents. Set a trap for some members. Ayon, may nakuha silang isa na kung baga e eh, humahanting kay Kasua. They were able to capture one, and they were able to interrogate it through. Uh, Jessica's questionable interrogation methods. They were able to get the information they need. So, naki, so they now know where Kasua's parents are being held. Pinuntahan nila. But while they were at it, they, they got shot at by these same guys. Humingi pa ng tulong sa mga disarya. Well, what was Jessica's answer? She knew how to drive and she knows how to use a gun. Pero nung dumating ni mga Aldisaria, she goes knock her up on them. Tapos tinulungan na niya ni Ryuhei. So eventually, they were able to to get to the hiding place where Kasua's parents are being held. But unfortunately, medyo they were too late. Patay na ang nanay ni Kasua. But natatnan pa nilang buhay ang father niya. Uh, her father was able to talk a bit about the uh, what his mistakes were with the church, and um, he agreed to offer his own child up to them. 
O baga parang sakripisyo. Talagang kulto eh, no? Well, eventually, Kazuha's father passed away. Pero, this is where the final scene came in. Nalaman ba na ni Eri that Kazuha is a hybrid? It means only one thing to the church. She can detect desarya even before they come out into this world. Alam niya kung saan kung saan kung saan lugar lalabas uli ang mga desarya na to. So, that means only one thing for the knocker ups. If they could anticipate where the desarya are where the, where the next desarya are going to going to come out, mauunahan na nila ang dreamer na maisasalba nila yung dreamer na nagtawag sa kanila. Mauunahan na nila ngayon the church. So, this is valuable information. And, she knows a thing or two about the church. But, before she could ever talk, PAK! Someone put a bullet through her head. Well, it was a sniper. Alata. Ngayon, nala- nag- nagtaka sila Jessica ngayon kung paano nalaman yung location nila. Ayun, naka-CCTV pa lang ang lugar na yun. So Jessica takes out the the CCTV camera. That's oh. Nag-report na lang yung siguro yung sniper sa head nila yun. The one with that mask. The one we saw in episode 4. Same guy. Yun ang yun ang head ng kultong ito. And according to Kaso, before 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 she got killed, he's only known by one name, the Hierarch. Unfortunately, she was about to reveal the true name of this Hierarch when she when she got snipered in the head. That was, uh, it's a really sad ending. Okay? So this means only one thing. The knocker ops are back to square one in the information battle. There's also a life lesson to be learned here. I'm gonna explain a little bit later. But right now, we need to break this episode down ARD style. Pace. It's a good mix between tense and slow. I say uh, during the op- the opening scenes, the church was was hunting down Kazuha, Kazuha and her parents. So yeah, tense yan. It was really tense. Then after the credits, yung battle, yung huling, yung huling battle na na hinando ng knocker ups na first time na nakita ni Rena si Kasuha. That was tense too. Because they weren't able to save this one also. Pangatlo na ito in a week. So, yeah. The knocker ups are... Um, the longer ups are seem to be in a, in a losing streak of sorts. And the pacing will make you realize that. So of course, yung car chase scene wherein Jessica showcased both her driving and marksmanship skills. Yung, okay, okay, ba, okay, bata, bata pa eh. Alam mo kung hawak na barrel? Desert Eagle! 44 Magnum! <laughs> Walang ya! Rather heavy handgun. Tsaka ang lakas ng re... Tsaka may, may kalakasan ng recoil nun. <laughs> Buti di siya tumatalsik. I was quite shocked at Jessica here. We've seen a side of Jessica that uh, we, we haven't... We haven't seen before. Yun nga. She knows how to drive despite her age. And again, despite her age, she knows how to shoot at Desert Eagle pang gamit siya. <laughs> wow! The pacing of this episode, it's almost superb. Kasi yung... Uh, it was well-paced. Fast kung kinakailangan, slow kung kinakailangan. Pero yung... Um, that final scene... Tense na eh, nung, nung namatay na pareho yung parents ni Kazuhe. Eh. That became tense right there. So... You get to think na... Is this church that hard to handle? Hmm. The pacing also made me realize that. Flow naman! First gear shift here was the opening scene. Yung... Um, 
tumatakas ang family ni Kaswa from the church. In, eh, mukhang nabutan sila eh. Because, uh, ang pinatakas na lang si Kasuha. So, uh, nagpaiwan yung magulang. So, yeah, that, that was a tense scene. And I call it a gear shift because it's, it actually sparked the, t- the chain of events of this episode. And, we can now tell how how vile this church is. And, uh, well, nalaman natin na kulto pala to. Which, uh, which are employing drugs, and um, VR tech uh, ne- and beings from another dimension to pers- to 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 advance its goals we now have a pretty good idea of how vile an organization the church is called mindset eh. once you're in you can never get out wow talagang kulto ang 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 culture Second gear shift is when Jessica was successful in obtaining information from this from this lackey of the church. Hindi uh, na pinakita ko paano niya ginawa eh. Basta sinabi na niya kay Rena yung hiniram niyang card, parang privilege card. Oh. Make sure to disinfect that. <laughs> Alagi. At saka pinakita na niya ako na ganun eh. Ano ne? Uh, Tululaway na. Ewan ko ano ginawa ni Jessica doon. But, it's obvious. Jessica knows a thing or two about about interrogation. <laughs> okay? Uh, hindi, pa, hindi naman confirm na hindi naman pinakita eh. We couldn't confirm nor deny the fact that Jessica knows these underhanded tactics. Jessica is the only non-Japanese in the group. She's an American. What this gear shift tells us is that each member of the knock, knocker ops, uh, each knocker op has her has his or her, her own way of dealing with this. Yeah, you can call them scumbags. Jessica had her way. Pinakita niya rito. Final gear shift. Tatlo. Is, of course, when Kazuo gets killed by a sniper. You can confirm your suspicions about the church on how vile on how evil this organization is they can go to that much trouble just to just to keep their members in dito talaga sniper at saka ano eh gumami pa ng nag live stream pa na CCTV para malaman kung nasaan yung target the church this church spells spares no expense in keeping its members silent Talaga, the case of Kasuha and her parents talaga pinatahimik nila they will do anything to to keep their organization a secret so if you ask me this gearship also tells me that well the knocker ups have their work cut out for them halang ang bitukan ng organisasyon na to so the knocker ups better be better be ready for anything but they really need to one up these guys. Kasi right now they're on a losing streak. It's a, it's a really sad ending. That gear ship. Just goes to show you. Here's the life lesson. If you think benefits your uh, a group is offering you is too good to be true and you're having that sinking feeling that there's no way out, don't take their offer. Yun lang ang sinasabi ng, ng buong episode na to, not just this gearship. Beware of cults. Beware of groups with a cult mentality. It can exist anywhere. Like, uh, religious cults. Uh, even in network marketing, the cult mentality exists. Yeah. This episode can also serve as a... Um, as a call to awareness of the cult mentality. Ingat kayo mga ka-lifestyle. Kung merong lumalapit sa inyo na merong uh, tawag dito, na ang, eh, ang sumali sa grupo nila na ganito, ganito ang benefits, na ganito ang ano, na talagang mapilit, do not take their offers. If you can, walk away. 
if they're still persistent, call someone in authority. Ganun lang yan. That's the moral lesson you will learn from this episode through this gear shift. These three gear shifts will play a role in this anime. Especially uh, the, the last one. Because the way I see it, this will serve as a wake-up call to the knocker-ups. Lahat sila. That they really need to up their game to be at least one step ahead of this church. Kailangan, kailangan nila. Dahil the church is, well, this enemy of theirs, they are doing everything they can to keep it a secret. They'll do everything they can to keep members in. And they will do everything they can to bring more members in. With Especially with these new uh, drops, drops na ganyan. With the death of Kazuha, you will start to hate this, uh, this organization. You will start to hate them. Plot-wise, malinis. It's appropriate for, um, for an episode to have an opening scene like that. Kasi hindi nyo naman pwedeng i-backstory yan. Kasi yung impact, it's not the same. Because basically you're trying to tell a story here and probably raise awareness as to as to what cults can do. So you really have to do this with uh, precisely and as clean as possible para it's easy to it's easy to get by the viewers. Kaya ito, talaga malinis ang plot. Opening scene was um, the church hunting down this family and midway they were able to secure some some information about where Kazuha's parents were and of course winding down to the final scene where Kazuha gets killed by a sniper. Ramdam ko yun. Kumabugad dibdib ko dun. That's how clean the plot was in this episode. Sanji Jen, you really did a good job on this one. Uh, that's the animation studio behind uh, this hydrometry. Galing. So, pace, flow, and plot. I almost did not, I almost wasn't able to tell one from the other. It's that good. <laughs> it's that good an episode. I don't know if they know by now, but it raised awareness as to how cults operate and will operate until until uh, until that fear hasn't gone down kasi bottom line these cults are cultivated on fear their belief systems are fear based yeah they call themselves and some of them call themselves a true religion uh-uh. sorry <laughs> you you can't fool me guys a true religion preaches love equality and forgiveness all legitimate religions do that so beside Tomary the animation episode 6 you know what you see good oh two thumbs up excuse me this, <laughs> this is probably the saddest ending I have um, ever seen in in a while. This confirms the uh, the losing streak the knocker ups are in now. Anagang, they are losing the information war against the uh, against the church, and they're they're desperate to get ahead. But if there's anything you should pick up from this episode, it's this. Beware of the cult mentality. Not, not, not cults. Okay? Not cults literally. But the cult mentality. If the belief system is fear-based, do not join it. Basically. It is not going to serve you or anybody mental, mental health-wise. Nope. You do not need a fear-based belief system in your life. Your business, your brand, no. 
Not even your status as an anime fan. If it's fear-based, then it has a cult mentality. If it has a cult mentality, don't join it. If it's persistent, isumbong nyo. Yan, ganun lang. Ganun, sa ganun, parang ano namang mabibiso ang mga, ang mga ganitong klaseng kulto eh. They need the, the, the need to make them stop spreading this fear-based mentality. It has to stop. It has to stop. And that's what this episode is trying to tell us. Especially nung pinatay si Kasuha rito. So again, this I Dramedy the Animation Episode 6. Thumbs up. Another socially relevant two thumbs up analyzed up for this anime. Next episode has been teasered. Uy! Mukhang yung... Mukhang magpapakilala na yung dalawang... Ano to? Mga knocker up din? Kasi that's what... That's what the opening and closing credits are showing us eh. Parang, parang mga knocker up din to eh. But we will find out what their... Uh, what their purpose is in this anime. What their motives are. And... Hmm, mukhang nai-insecure na si Ryuhei doon sa, sa isa eh. Yung sa lalaki. Mukhang nai-insecure siya rito eh. Pero we'll need... We gotta see that. So, we're gonna wait for next week and watch that episode. In the meantime, mga ka-lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. The Blood Halloween has begun! <laughs> Talagang bakbang ang umati ka po from start to finish. Um, Dragon has its moments down. And of course, uh, the usual for Takemichi, he's the punching bag. You can, you can consider Takemichi as the comic relief here. But, whoa, Mikey versus Kazutora has, has gone down now. And Kazutora is uh, being unfair now to Mikey. It's now a three-on-one fight now. While this was happening, Dragon has to deal with Hanma. And of course, Takemichi is still getting a grip on things. His immediate superior steps in at sinabi ng, well, si Mitsuya, sinabi lang sa kanya, Hoy! Nagpapatayan na rin, nag, nagpapatayan na tayo rito, wala ka pang ginagawa. <laughs> no, may tag, Takemichi, medyo nagising, ayun. He starts, he starts swinging himself until such time na so, suray-suray na siya sa pagkakabog-bog while Draken is now worrying about their numbers kasi mukhang marami ng toman ang na-down. Siguro they're all conscious. Conscious enough to hear Takemichi um, still spat at the enemy. Wala ko. Something to that effect, ganito ang pagkakasabi ni Takemichi. Wala akong pakialam! Kung papatayin niyo ako sa bugbog, babangon at babangon pa rin ako. Well, this practically motivated the whole of Toman. Especially yung mga nag-down na. Eh, kaya siguro. The newbie has a point. We should not let Draken worry about us. Oh, Bangon silang lahat. Then, ayun. Sinugod na ni Draken si Hanma. Nag-all out na rin siya. Final scene. The three-on-one battle has got gotten to Mikey na. Well, hinahatawa na siya ng tubo ni Kasotora. Then, I think, may binanggit si Kasotora doon that really pissed Mikey off. Lo and behold, Invincible Mikey is standing tall. And, you see that look on his face? Ooh, he's now hell-bent on killing Kasotora. <laughs> Grabe. Bukod, nagbukod demonyo bigla si Mikey rito. Woo! Grabe! This early, I can now feel the road to the finale. And we, um, and episode 20 has yet to go down. Pace. Natural. Mabilis. E nagkakapatayan eh. To fans of its manga, it, I, think, I think it's the most, 
Yeah, it's the most important arc of them all. The Blood Halloween arc. Kasi talagang dito nagkasubukan ng Valhalla tsaka Toman. As you know, mga ka-lifestyle, when it comes to Tokyo Revengers, when there's a um, a gang battle scene, the the pacing is always tense. Kaya talagang mabilis ang masasabi mo talagang mabilis ang pace ng episode na to. Although, I don't know if you can find it slow kasi everyone played their role eh. Si Draken, of course, uh, while Mikey is busy with Kasutora, siya, siya, siya talagang he's the one calling the shots for Toman. Kasi siya ang number two eh. And then of course, yung mga iba pa niyang kasama, iba pa niyang kasama, si Mitsuya, si Matsuno, si um, everybody in Toman. Right? But, uh, their numbers were down. Then, all of a sudden, Takemichi starts swinging. Uh, talagang, yeah, he's a, magamaga na yung mukha niya sa mga bugbog. And he still, he still wants it. He still wants to bring it. Yeah, well, yung mga na, yung mga bumagsak ng Toman, naki, siguro nakita siya. Sa kanya siguro. Wow! Hindi ako magpapadaig sa, sa baguhang ito. Teka nga muna. <laughs> Buma, bumangod. Eh, well, Takemichi is practically a newbie in Toman. Although, he has known both, uh, he has known both, he has known practically the core of the gang for quite some time na. Okay, even Mitsuya, kahit si... No. Even Mitsuya. Masasabi na talaga na baguhan pa lang siya sa gang na to. And for him to... To just simply... Ask Valhalla to bring it. Kung ikay member ng Toman talaga na, na down, mamamotivate ka o either mahiya ka o mamotivate ka. So, pero I think 60% mahihiya sila eh. Kasi eh, eh dinadaig, dinadaig silang yun ang baguhan na to. Although, bugbog sarado na, he still wants some. He still wants a piece of Valhalla. So, what do you do? Ah, teka muna. Babangon din ako. Teka muna. Hindi pa ako tapos. <laughs> Ganun lang yan eh. The pacing made me realize that. So, talagang naging naging factor si Takemichi rito. Naging factor siya rito sa, sa Blood Halloween. Flow naman. First gear shift is when, well, Kasutora, well, Basically, challenges Mikey to a one-on-one. Sumingit si Hanma. Oh, teka muna, sabi ni Draken. Ang laban mo'y sa akin. So, talagang uh, nagkasabukan yung number one tsaka um, number one at yung number two. Of course, si Kasotora. Why did I call that a gear shift? It's because the leadership, basically, of Toman and Valhalla have, have now been separated from the rest. So what do you do now as a as a subordinate of the gang? Oh, bye. Start swinging. <laughs> kasi yung mga lead, kasi yung mga leader mo, ayan, nagbabakbakan. You better start swinging now. Parang ganoon lang 'yan eh. So, ayan, tuloy pa rin ng tuloy pa rin ng patayan. Second gear shift is when Takemichi realized that he needs to start swinging himself. So, ikaw na siguro. Wag ko na muna alalahanin si Baji. Abay, sarili ko buhay na nakasalalay dito. So, start swinging, pa, yun. Meron nang umano sa kanyang balhala. Sinadbal lang siya ni Mitsuya. Sin- sinabi lang sa kanya ni Mitsuya, Get a grip, Takinichi. Nasa division mo ako, kaya umayos ka. G- ganun na ba? Something to that effect. Ganun na pagkakasabi ni-, ni Mitsuya. So, well, sabi ni Takinichi, well, tama, tama nga naman si Mitsuya. You're in the middle of a um, of a gang war. Tapos, all you're doing right now is to look for Baji. Abay, teka muna. <laughs> Depensa na muna sarili mo. Baka, eh, baka, baka, two, baka three seconds later, mamatay ka na. Abay, at, at least defend yourself. So, that's how, that's how the third gear shift started. So, yun. Bigla na nung uh, everyone else was down na, eh, nawawalan na rin ng gana si Draken. Kasi nakikita nyo yung iba niyang kasama, medyo nawawalan na rin ng gana. Here, here comes Takinichi. 
asking Valhalla to bring it. Hindi pa siya tapos. <laughs> Although he's a bloody mess right now. He's is a um, well, a few a few Valhalla have already beaten the shit out of him, but he's still he's still walking. He's still asking Valhalla to bring it. So eh ganun na magiging effect eh. I, kung ikay na down na member ng Val, ng Toman you either get motivated by this or you or you be ashamed of yourself ito baguhan lang to pero bugbog sarado na pero he's still asking Valhalla to bring it to him aba yan ang gagawin mo ay wait take muna babangon na ako eh hindi pwedeng ganyan <laughs> Mas patagal pa ako sa'yo. Ako ang down. <laughs> ganun, ang, ganun ang mindset dyan. Why did I call this a gearship? It's because Takemichi basically motivated the whole of Toman to keep fighting. Narealize din ito nila, nila Draken, ni Mitsuya, at saka ni... Uh, actually, si Mits, Mitsuya was the one who helped Mikey... who helped Takemichi up eh. So, of course, sila, sila Smiley, sila Matsuno. Ba, teka muna. Babae, ito yung, ito yung bago natin kasama eh. Mukhang minumotivate tayo. Halika! Come on, Valhalla, bring it! Halika, di pa tayo tapos. Ganun lang yan. So, this gear shift is proof that Takimichi was a factor in the Blood Halloween. Kaya, sinabi ni 2017 Draken na, you were there, Takimichi. You saw it. So, that was probably the thing that etched into Draken's mind na tinulungan tayo ni Takimichi na lumaban pa. And this gearship proves that. Kaya, sinabi kong gearship. These three gearships that I saw mm-hmm, will play a role at least in the next episode. Kasi binitin tayo eh. When, uh, when Mikey went Invincible Mikey <laughs> Doon na puto yung episode eh. We will see the repercussions of these gear shifts In the next episode Tagaan nyo sa pato yan Plot wise Malinis Bakit ka pa magsisigit ang backstory dito? Well except for Kasutoras Kasi tinanong siya ni Ni Mikey dito eh Am I really your enemy? So nag flashback lahat No it's not it's not exactly a backstory scene. It's a, it's more of a flashback scene. Kasi, bigla sa tinanong ng ganun ni Mikey. Eh. So, nag-flashback lahat kay Kasotora. So, it all started when um, his father was beating up his mother. Nung bata pa siya. Then, nakipaghiwalay ang tatay niya sa nanay niya. So, his mother made him choose sides. Then, sinabi na niya kay Mikey na, if you kill your enemy, you're a hero. So, medyo na piss off si Mikey doon. Yung dalawang humahawak sa kanya na personally recruited by Kasutora into Valhalla, wala. Gulpe. Yung isa, ipinangsipa pa niya kay Kasutora. Doon niya tinanong kay Kasutora, Is that why you killed my brother? This practically seals Kasutora's fate. If ever, the plot may be realized that. The plot was that clean. Kahit merong flashback sequence dito, malinis pa rin yung plot. Kasi talagang nag-focus yung buong episode sa Blood Halloween. Kasi talagang, talagang itong dalawang gang na to dito, yata, dito talaga nagkasubukan. I think in the manga, dito sila talaga nagkasubukan. Talagang, I think, na like in the manga, Nalagasan sila ng numbers doon, both sides. Both sides, nalagasan ng, nalagasan ng tao. To have probably the most intense gang, gang war sequence as one whole episode, okay lang. <laughs> it's better than Toman versus Mobius. This one, The Blood Halloween. Galing! For a prolonged uh, gang war sequence, talagang you really need to you really need the plot to be this clean para hindi mawala sa focus ang audience because if you want, if you really want the anime 
fans to know that this is one of the most important arcs in the manga, you really need a clean plot. Talagang gusto mo talagang i-focus lahat ng attention ng viewer dito sa episode na to. And Widen Films did that. They did a splendid job when it when it came to the plot of this episode. Talagang malinis. Squeaky clean. So pace, flow, and plot, they all work together for this episode. So giving us another great one from this anime. So, Tokyo Revengers episode 19. Hindi na ako mag-isip. Oh, two thumbs up. <laughs> Isip-isip pa. Ganda ka lang episode eh. Bakbaka ko mga ating kabuha eh. This is the kind of episode that you will that you will be more than happy to glue your ass on a chair. But before that, you're gonna get your favorite food and drinks and put them on put them on the side table. Ayun. Kumuha ka na ng epoxy, ilagay mo na sa ilagay mo na sa puta ng upuan mo, umupo ka na. Yan. <laughs> Para hindi ka na makakaisip na umalis eh. These are the kinds of episodes that we season anime fans long for mga ganyan arguably the best episode of Tokyo Revengers talagang dito talaga nagkasubukan ng dalawang gang na yan and now we know why 2017 Draken still remembers the Blood Halloween how Pakinichi motivated the entire gang to just keep just keep on swinging kahit outnumbered kayo Eventually, malalagasan din ng tao ang Valhalla. Draken proved that he j- when he when he when he saw Takinichi do this, talagang hmm, we'll be alright. He's he downs ten Valhalla in one go. So natakot yung ibang member ng Valhalla din sa pinakilaman si Hanman na lang. You can contend with me on this. For me, this is the anime's best episode. Episode 19. And atamang tama. Next week, the road to this anime's finale will be starting. Yeah, what a way for... To, uh, to set us up for the road to the finale. So again, Tokyo Revengers episode 19. Two thumbs up. A blood Halloween. So in typical Revengers fashion, no teasers. That's what I love about Tokyo Revengers. Ang galing, ang galing mag-market ng kanilang future episodes. Eh, no? We'll just have to wait for next week and watch that episode. So in the meantime, mga ka-lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Right? Enjoy na ngayon. For Yu-Gi-Oh fans like us, that's a milestone. <laughs> but I think this is one of the most exciting episodes so far sa Yu-Gi-Oh series ito. Bakit? Well, let's run it down. Yuga is in seemingly a state of uh, depression. Eh, yun na nakikita ng, ng Team 7 sa kanya eh. Then all of a sudden, he decides to go to the Goa spaceship and and see you. Yung tumalo sa kanya recently. So, while all of this was happening, si Swirly naman, imbis na, imbis na sumama kay Yuga, he goes to the library to, well, to, to somehow check out the source or whatever thing that can counter this card known as fusion kasi dito sa mundo ng sevens iba kasi ang effect ng fusion sa polymerization so fusion is an entirely new card so ang ginawa ni Swerdy, ayun nga pumunta sa library, baka doon siya naghanap ng, doon siya nagresearch okay? that's where he did this due diligence eh ang Ang assistant librarian doon, si, si Nini. We, we all know what happened. Kuro si Nini kung, baka, kung anong ginagawa ni Swirly dito. Swirly stumbled upon a book entitled Sevens. Well, as he was going through the pages of this book, 
mukhang nakakalata niya na teka seven stroke mo abay ito yung kwento ng seven stroke position ah so nung narinig ni Mimi yun na, lalo siyang na curious it, she now sees this book as her way back to Goha Corp nakiusap siya kay Swirly na ibigay na sa kanya yung book Swirly said nope gusto kong tulungan si Yuga, ibibigay ko sa kanya to. So, ang sinabi ngayon ni Mimi, abay kong ganun, let's settle this in a rush duel. Ooh! Ang problema, walang dalang next si Swirly. So, Mimi suggested that he get, that he, um, get one of those rental decks in the library itself. Ang library ba lang ito ng, ng Goa City, meron siya mga rental deck. It's not, It's not just books that they went out. Also decks. May nabili doon si Swirly na talagang ako, ako mismo na siya. Ako mismo na siya. So what this was going on, you guys all, Yuga and Team Sevens, the core of Team Sevens, they are already in the, on the ship. They, well, they actually crashed into the ship. Well, of course, ang unang sumulubo sa kanila, si Yuwo. You has every right to treat them as hostiles kasi they literally crashed into the ship. Tinanong mismo ni Yuga, did you make that card? Ang sagot ni Yuo, no. But do you know who made it? Sagot naman ni... Ang sagot naman ni Yuo doon, I have no idea. So biglang, from si Yuga, biglang, So, isa lang naging conclusion ni Yuga doon. We all don't know who created this card. Pero, because of this card, the possibilities of expanding Rush Duels is now more infinite than ever. Something to that effect. So, while this was going on, nagduduelo na si ano, nagduduelo na sila Swirly at Mimi for that book. And did you know what deck you Swirly used this time? The Dark Magician deck! Fire <laughs> service! Eventually, Swirly won. Unang hawak ba lang niya ng deck na yun? Tinalo niya si Mimi. Na hawak naman na mas experienced na duelist case sa kanya. Mas gamay naman ni Mimi ang sarili niyang deck. Eh yun, first time na kinawakan ni Swirly yung... Dark Magician deck, pero tinalo niya si, Win, si Mimi with this. Final scene! The usual comment really from Kaizo. You is going at them with full force. All, with all possible security measures. So, tumulong si... Uh, tumulong si... Tumulong si Tiger. And, but in the process, Kaizo got shot into space. <laughs> Nakasama yung parang torture chamber android ni Yuro ah, ni Yuwo pala so wow <laughs> looks like Kaizo will be taking a vacation this time from from Sevens mukhang matagal pa natin siya makikita ulit <laughs> woo grabe nah I'm not gonna do that I'm not gonna do that overall thing anymore Mga lifestyle, sorry. Because I really want to keep you in suspense. I really want to build up the review to the rating itself. So, no, no more overall. Because, well, it's my rating that matters in the end. So, let's keep it that way from now on. Okay? So, let's break it down. No, before we break it down, ARD style, I just want to say, I just want to say these things again. Fire service! Alright. <laughs> pace. The pace was moderate because it's been switching scene, it's been switching, uh, the story of, the story of this episode has, has been switching venues, eh. Library, spaceship. Library, spaceship. Right, so, kumaga, Um, two important events in uh, in Team Seven's quest to counter fusion. Pero 
in the end, through that book, nalaman na the Jews na kagad ni Yuya, ano Yuya? Pwede, ano to R5? Yuga! Okay. Yuga! There is a way to counter fusion. Based on what they have uh, what they have read so far in the book and by the way there are three missing pages from that book talagang punit someone tore those three pages off no but in likelihood Otis probably did that because Otis created the seven soul arts type siguro binis niya dito sa librong ito and it is safe to assume that Otis was the one who tore off those three missing pages Dali. It gave Yuga enough time to theorize on a solution to counter fusion. So it's in it's in the book and it's also in space. Ginawaron ni ni Yuo ang card na yon when they were when they were still in Goha Space Elementary from um, space debris. So. Noho may idea na si Yuga on how to counter fusion. Tandaan nyo, the Rust Duel format as declared by Yuga himself has endless possibilities. So, any new card is possible. But, ginawa na nga ni Neil eh, ba? He invented the maximum summon. And now it's Yuo. He created the card Fusion which is very different from Polymerization. As in, talagang, eh, talagang pinalalabas ng, ng series na to na this is an entirely different card for fusion summoning. The pace made me realize that. The pacing of this episode was slow enough for me to deep dive into it. I don't know about you guys, pero nakapag deep dive ako sa episode ito. Right now, while, I, while I'm making this review. Slow naman. First gear ship was the opening scene. When Yuga decided to to go to the spaceship, uh, to go to the ship and meet Yuo again. Well, in this na kontrahin siya ng ng mga ng Team Seven, sumama na nasa sila because Yuga had that disturbing look on his face. And yung pala later on in the episode, we found out that um he was been thinking too hard on who created Fusion, where it was created, how it was created. He didn't get any sleep the previous night. <laughs> he did an all-nighter thinking just that. So, talagang... Abay, kung talagang wala kang, wala kang itinulog nung nakaraang gabi, you would probably look like him, si Yuga. You would probably look worse than Yuga. It brings out the monster in every human. That, yan, hindi siya nakatulog the previous night. Wala na. Wag na umasang magkakaroon pa ng positive attitude yung the next day. Yugo was the exception here because he is a really, he's a really fun-loving individual. Why did I call it a gear ship? Because what? It set off the episode. Second gear ship was when Mimi decided to well, to settle to settle this issue between her and Swirly through a rush duel. Kasi, well, I, I, guess she, I guess she was confident. She was that confident in beating Swerdy. Groupie lang ng Team Sevens to eh. And nakik- na, baka nakikiray doon lang. She might also figure that this guy's yet to learn about Rush Dueling. O sige. Pero tulong, pero binigyan na, binigyan na niya ng partida si Swerdy, which she probably regretted later on. O yan, ito yung... Mamili ka na lang sa mga rental deck dun sa kabilang, ano, sa kabilang side ng library. Sige, pababayaan kita. And, lo and behold, Swirly chose the Dark Magician deck. Wow. Why did I call this a gear ship? Because it is a fan service gear ship. The deck we have, we haven't seen in ages. Huli, ba, huli ko pa nakitang yung original na yung... Someone actually used the original Dark Magician deck as in yung build si Yugi Moto pa sa Dual Monsters. Hindi. Eh, yeah. Wala pang ano nun. Wala pang Egyptian Gods nun in his deck. Wala pang tatlong God card nun. It was all Dark Magician. Everything 
was anchored around dark being dark magician being on the field. Kabe cards like ano ba mga pinicture dito. Thousand knives, dark magic attack, and of course his sidekick si dark magician girl. Si dark magician girl ang talagang pinang talalo ni Swordy because kaya pa nanya pina smash sa DN Keto ni ni Mimi. He needs Dark Magician in the graveyard to use Dark Magician Girl's effect. Yun nga effect niya. For every Dark Magician in the graveyard, plus 500 attack si Dark Magician Girl. Eh, di natalo niya si Nini. Direct attack na. Agad. Po. Tapos. Panalo si Swirly. Wow. This gear shift reminded me of the of the old days. During the early days of the card game. Talagang pag Dark Magician ang gamit ng kalaban mo, muwi ka na. <laughs> Practically, isuko mo na yung duel. Isuko mo na yung match. Wala kang laban. To, to have this gear shift talaga, it, it really, it will really send the old, the OG Yu-Gi-Oh fans to those days. That's why I called it a gear shift. Final gear shift is when, what? Yuga realized on how to counter fusion. Mukhang na-figure out na niya. Again, Otis left some clues. Sigurado, ang, ang nagbasa ng librong yon si Otis because there were three missing pages. Talagang na-assume na kagad ng Team Sevens that Otis did this. So, nawawala eh. So, nag-advance ng pages si Swirly. Ayun, nakita ni Yuga. Hmm. And, He's already theorized that the way to counter fusion is in this book and in space. Parang ganun lang yan. Eh. Ewan ko kung gagawin niya. But, asakan nyo, in the next few episodes, we're going to find out what he's going to do with, uh, with, with, with that theory of his. How is he going to apply that? And that third gear shift, I'm telling you guys right now, we can look back at that gear shift on how it all started. Plot-wise, Plachado. Because, you, well, this is what makes Yu-Gi-Oh! a very unique franchise. Because, although na walang, walang masyadong malinis na plots dito for episode, magaling silang manghibla ng episode. Like, this one. This, is, no, this episode is no exception. On one scene, we're in the we're in the the Goa City Library. Then the next scene, we're back in the spaceship. We're we're back in the uh, in the Goa City ship. Kagad, no, they do not uh, switch scenes. Uh, what you call this? Recklessly, they didn't do it recklessly. Omega, up. Dibitin mo na namin, dito mo na tayo sa library. So, they are making the viewers understand that while this was going on, this was going on. Yan na lang yan eh. Kaya, well, you really need a well-ironed out plot to do that. Or to, uh, to, to pull that off. Yu-Gi-Oh! is known for that. And Seven, it's, um, it's doing these kinds of episodes like Talagang, talagang part siya ng Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise because the way it irons out episodes vintage Yu-Gi-Oh! you will have no problem understanding what's going on face, flow, and plot they all came together for this episode wala akong masabi <laughs> A, another fan service episode from this series so well I personally hope that um, that the that the library just gives the Dark Magician deck to uh, to Swirly. Like um, makaparang bagay sa kanya, right? Because his you get up niya, hindi mo akalain ano eh, hindi mo akalain ganito kagaling na duelist to. And for him to use the Dark Magician deck like that on his first try, magira ba? Ah. <laughs> Because. The key to that engine is Dark Magician. 
you need him on the field for most of his support cards. Yan, Thousand Knives, Dark Magic Attack, and uh, and and some of the newer support cards that have been released over the over the past few years for the arch type. Hindi ganon kadaling uh, gamitin ang isang Dark Magician deck these days. You really need to well, you really need to iron that deck out. And you really need practice. It takes lots of practice to truly master a Dark Magician deck. Much less, uh, much less uh, design it or write it down on paper. It takes a lot of practice. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 60. 60 episodes na. Woo! Two thumbs up. The biggest reason why I gave it the two thumbs up is this. Fan service! Eh, bilo nyo ba naman? It is the Dark Magician deck's very first appearance in this series. When was the last time we saw Dark Magician in a Yu-Gi-Oh! anime? Dark Side of Dimensions pa! Mga na lifestyle. The movie that practically closed the original Yu-Gi-Oh! storyline. That was the last time we saw Dark Magician. And of course, Dark Magician Girl. Yung basta yung kanyang... Uh, the archetype surrounding him. The archetype that supports him. And it was also the last time we saw Blue Eyes White Dragon in a... in a... in a, in a Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. Until Sevens came out, of course. Otis's first deck was Blue Eyes. Hmm. Yung nabas si Blue Eyes White Dragon <laughs> in the pilot. So, wow. Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens is continuing its um, branding of being a fan service anime. Just for fan service anime, of course, for us Yu-Gi-Oh! fans. Long time or first time. Talagang. Talagang kinarir na nila ang pagiging fan service anime. <laughs> but the storyline of Sevens is heating up. Who knows what Yuga, what Yuga might discover or even make to counter Fusion. Malay natin, baka gumamit siya ng Easy Summon or Synchro. You can never tell. And, wala ba kayo napansin? I think he hasn't used the Ritual Summon here. Lahat ng, lahat ng predecessors niya ng main protag, they have all used the Ritual Summon at one time or another in their own show. Ang ano lang yata na hindi Ang hindi ko lang sure was Yuma in Zexal. Para wala siyang ginamit na visual monster na. Ah, eh. uh, I'm I'm really not sure. Now, if I'm wrong on that, could you um comment below, right? I really want to uh I really want to confirm whether or not Yuma was able to use a ritual monster during his own show. Okay? Comment. Okay? Comment your discoveries. Let's talk about that. So again, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 16. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this way faster. It's not going to be my lifestyle. Okay? Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, yeah. Next episode has been teasered. Uy, mukhang... Mukhang may i-exena na uli ah. Um, I'm pretty excited about this one. So, let's wait for next week and watch that episode. In the meantime, mga ka-lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Let's run both of them down. As if they were, uh, as if they were a one-hour pilot. We find the main protag in a um, mukong ikakasal siya sa isang. Let's just say to a, um, to a piece of garbage, the nobleman. <laughs> yeah, he, he acted like a piece of garbage. So all of a sudden, these two old men rescue her, takes her off the island. And takes her to this bigger island called Goblin Island. Yun pala, nobleman din pala itong si Fena. Lady Fena is what 
Oh, these two old men call her. Yung pala, ito pala talaga yung mga mga loyal servants ng kanyang tatay. Si Franz Hauptmann. The Hauptmann family is uh, it's a family of nobles. And the ones inhabiting Goblin Island are their most trusted um, what you call this? Serfs. Mga every inhabitant on Goblin Island has served the Hauptmann family for generations. One of them is Yuki Maru. Sabihin Yuki Mura. Ano ba yan? Sa, sa, sa Joran pa yun ha. Itong si Yuki Maru, kababata ni Fena ito. So, 10 years later, they meet again. At yun pala, what? Well, galing. Ang galing na swordsman to. The priest of the high, well, the, um, the master of the island, who's also a priest, gave her this parang crystal. Uh, they call it a stone. It has, it has a riddle uh, laced with it. Ten years ago, ipinaubayan ni, ng tatay niya ito kay Yukimaru. Sabi pa nga niya, sabi pa nga niya daw nun, protect it with your life. And, natandaan tuloy ni Fena kung ano, sinab, o, kung ano ang huling habilin sa kanya ng kanyang ama. One word, Eden. At mukhang naalarma na ang ano, mukhang nagets na agad ng high priest kung anong ibig sabihin ng kanyang, kay, ng kanyang nasirang kaibigan. So, with one hand gesture, tinawag niya ang buong crew ni Fena, or at least yung magiging crew niya, which composed of, of course, y- Yukimaru, um, yung isang cook na nakilala niya, the, um, the bowmaker, and the twins, yung pasaway, yung kambal na pasaway, and the, um, the mechanical genius na babae, maliit, sila ang inassign ng high priest na to na maging crew ni Fena. What is her ship? Putang ina, a submarine! Which is the design of, uh, the mechanical genius's name is Karin. Design niya ito. Pero ang, ang nag, ang gumawa talaga, yung tatay niya. Wow! So they now set off a journey on uh, uh, to solve the riddle of this stone. But technically, they are pirates. Wow! Alright. Grabe ang... Uh, grabe pala ang umpisa ng anime na to. Pace! If you can combine the pacing of both episodes... Yeah. If this were a one-hour pilot... I'd say the pacing was well balanced. Kasi, yung, uh, yung dalawang dating servidor ng ama niya ang nag-rescue sa kanya. Uh, she was about to get married off to a, um, uh, to a piece of garbage of a no- I don't know if you can call that a noble. Kasi, a womanizer and he spends money like, they're, like, it, like, like it grows on trees. Yeah, and he looks like a piece of garbage. Okay. I could, if I were in the anime, I could easily kick his teeth in for being a piece of garbage. <laughs> Basically, that's how this anime started. And the pacing of this episode is somewhat, in, yeah, it's really enjoyable. It, it will really make you, in, it will really give you a, um, uh, an enjoyable experience in watching the first two episodes. Ganun, ganun yung assessment ko sa pacing ng episode na to. Good combination of fast and slow kasi if you would take this if you would take them separately again uh, fast ang pace ng pilot yung episode 2 naman medyo nagbagal kasi uh, it's basically an aftermath but if you put them back again as a 1 hour pilot sakto ang pacing then oh flow naman We'll just take the big, the, the biggest gear shifts of each episode para medyo, uh, para medyo mabilis tayo. The biggest gear shift of episode 1 was when Yukimaru rescued Fena from these potential rapists of hers. Uh, pag mumukha pala ng mga ito, mukhang mga rapists talaga eh. Mukhang igagang rape pa siya eh. So, well, 
Yukimaru asserts himself as a gentleman warrior. Kills them all. Kills all four of them. You know, I probably only um took him only about five seconds. <laughs> Dinang din kasi ng mga ng mga assailants sa to yung isang matandang yung isang matandang ah uh, rumi rescue din kay Fena si I think that was Otto si Otto. The other one was Salman. So wala. There's no one to protect Fena. Hmm. In comes Yukimaro. Pak. Wow. Kills all four. Wala. Showed no mercy. The reason why I called this the biggest gear shit of the pilot is, well, it's a uh, reunion of sorts for childhood friends. Yukimaro's lineage is, is sworn to protect the Hauptmann family. Kaya, eh, medyo magkaidad sila. So, during that scene where Fena could, could, could not really rem remember how to uh, solve the riddle of the stone, Eh, sina, well, being the childhood friend that he is, Yukimaro just told her to grow up. That's a reality check. May iniwan pa nga siyang short sword kay Fena. So, this, this has now become Fena's main weapon. But, she also used it to cut her hair. If those events couldn't, couldn't cite this scene as a gear shift, I don't know what is. Now the biggest gear shift of the second ep of episode two was was when uh, Fena appeared before the high priest again, na short haired na. Why did I call that a gear shift? Well, simple. Kasi sinabi na niya kung ano ang ane. Uh, meron na siya na clue na binigay sa kanya ng 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 kanya na sirang ama. It's one word, Eden. So, medyo mukhang nakalarma ang high priest sa sinabi niyang to. And instant, and in a in, in just one hand gesture, tinawag niya ang magiging crew ni Fena. At sinabi naman niya na ano eh, um, he's more than willing to give her a ship. Ayun nga, yung submarine na design ni Karin. So, basically, the, uh, the way I see it, yes, they are. They have now become pirates. Because um, a submarine, well, it's not the usual pirate ship. But hey, you go underwater, you assault other ships. You, know, you you can actually board other ships using the submarine. Just go underwater and punch a hole in their hull. Mm. Oh, sige. Kung gusto yung, kung gusto yung Manatili sa ibaba ng tubig. Hand over the goods and we will plug that hole. <laughs> Parang ganun lang yan eh. So, yeah. That's the biggest gear shift. It's because basically Fena is now set on a journey. So, I think that so far that's the biggest gear shift of this anime. You would look at that gear shift from later episodes on how it all started. Basically, that's the gear shift. That's the gear shift to look at. To look back to. Aya, I called it the biggest gear shift of episode 2. Aya, those two gear shifts, mm -hmm, the way I see it, those two gear shifts will play a role in this anime. Especially the first one yung sa pilot kasi the way I see it of course Fena is the captain of the ship and her first mate is Yukimaru yun lang magiging dynamic niyan plot wise unlike its predecessor Peach Boy Riverside malinis ang plot well compared to compared to Peach Boy Riverside's jumbled run <laughs> I'll take this anytime kasi it follows a definite path. It yeah, it definitely follows a chronological order. You understand mga lifestyle? I can say right now that I am not regretting the day I replaced Peach Boy Riverside with this. Because what? 
You're follow your um an anime this anime is trying to tell a story. Paano mo mako-convince na kwento ito kung ijajabon mo mga episodes? You tell me. Production IG is doing a great job so far, okay? With these two uh with with this anime, okay? And they're not following Asai Productions uh playbook at all. <laughs> Production IG is more reputable than Asa here. Kaya, yeah. they got, um, they got a reputation to keep. They got a reputation to maintain. So, malinis ang plot ng dalawang episodes na to. Talagang, there's a, you can clearly see a chronological order here being followed. Kaya, malinis ang plot. Now, there are flashback scenes in, in the pilot, but it's totally understandable. Lalo na yung opening scene Kasi Ito yung pinanggalingan ni Fena On how she ended up Well On how she ended up On that island we're in In her own words All males are sleaze balls <laughs> Talagang basura ang mga, lala, ang mga kalalakihan dito sa island na to And How she Became The captain of her own ship First two episodes pa lang Halata ako na eh. It's not it, it won't be another Peach Boy Riverside. That I assure you, Maha lifestyle. Kaya pace, flow and plot up. They all came together for the first two episodes of this anime. Buti na lang late na nag uh, late na nag start ng airing ng anime na to. Kung hindi Peach Boy Riverside would have left an empty slot. And I, uh, well, and I have an obligation to fulfill to you guys because since I was totally dissatisfied with what Peach, Ri- Peach Boy Riverside was doing, so hanggang first half of the run lang siya, I had to look for a replacement and I thought, oh, meron nga palang anime na link na mag uh, But I completely forgot the, the name of the anime, so I checked it out again. Ayun. Fena Pirate Princess. Uy, tamang tama. Mag-uumpisa na ito. So, this would be the uh, this would be the ideal replacement to Peach Boy Riverside. And that guarantees us another holdover for next season. <laughs> so, Fena Pirate Princess episodes 1 and 2. Mm. Deserved. Welcome to the roster. Two thumbs up. Technically, it's too early to tell if uh, if it if it um, if it can be a good alternative to One Piece. Yep, that other pirate anime. Everyone, nearly everyone, has come to know and love. But the way I see it, dalawang episodes palang. This can be a good uh, alternative to One Piece. Bakit? Well. The circumstances behind the main protag's um, quest, ibe. Si Luffy kasi, all he wanted was to become the king of pirates. That's why he ate that forbidden fruit. All his life, he wanted to become a pirate. Pero si Fena, just pure circumstance, kaya siya naging pirate. Because, well, she is uh, the daughter of a noble na... Kumbaga, uh, may nagpapatay rito sa father niya. Halata eh. She was uh, practically left to die. Her father had no choice but to... That was the only way her father had to had to save her. Ganun lang. She was uh, shipwrecked on this island full of sleaze balls. <laughs> she grew up on this island... For the, for the next 10 years, she was growing up on this island. At, at mukhang ikakasal pa siya sa isang, sa isang basurang noble. <laughs> Ang malas, no? Good thing, her, her father's former um, servants tracked her down. Ayun, sinal ba siya? And, took her to Goblin Island to, uh, what to... Give her a heads up on what has happened during the past ten, during the past ten years that she was on this island. So, 
Medyo komplikado yung circumstances ni Fena. Ang kay Luffy, madali eh. Uh, he, just wanted to be, he just wanted to become the king of pirates. And, pero, the only similarity here, I see that yung kanilang magiging choice for first mate, eh halos pareho ang skill set. Luffy has Zoro. Fena has Yukimaru. Paro silang swordsman. Pero, si Zoro, he wields three swords. And talagang malawak ang skill set niya bilang swordsman. The only thing we know about Yukimaru is that he is also a double wielder. And he's really fast with those swords. Talagang, kung ikaw ang kala, kalaban, wala. Hindi mo malalaman, napatay ka na pala dyan. We have yet to see um, how broad Yukimaru's skill set as a swordsman is. Kasi, may sapong episodes pa tayong tatahakin. Remember guys, Fena Pirate Princess is a 12 episode run. So, nakadalawang episodes na tayo kagad in one week. So, we got 10 more. We got 10 more to go. So, we have lots of time as to explore um, this character named Yukimaru. Eventually, siya magiging first mate ni Fena. Ganun lang yan. <laughs> so, again, Fena Pirate Princess episodes 1 and 2 Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up for both these episodes, Maka Lifestyle. Welcome to the roster, Fena. I was so excited with the first two episodes that I did not bother uh, waiting for the teaser for the next episode. <laughs> Sorry, Maka Lifestyle. Pero, we still have to do the drill whether, whether teaser or no teaser, di ba? So, let's wait for next week and watch the next episode. Yun lang yun. In the meantime, Maka Lifestyle, Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Let me remind you, mga lifestyle, this is the midway point of this anime's run. Character team is at a crossroads, so to speak. Let's uh, let's explain why. It is now clear why why they've been sent to the dinosaur empire. Because well. The Dinosaur Empire and the humans through Jin Hayato have signed a, an armistice. Well, let's just say it's a temporary truce between them. Because, well, it's obvious they got a common enemy right now. The Andromeda Stellaration. Emperor Gordon III of the Dinosaur Empire has deemed it necessary for the Saurians and the humans to sign this armistice. The very existence of both races depend on it. Stokers that the Andromeda Federation have been opening around the world, they are getting bigger and they are slowly swallowing up the planet. Sa deductions ni, ni Jin, it's going to eat half the planet and eventually the planet will collapse. Sa pinaggagawa ng Andromeda Federation ito, both the humans and the Saurians are in danger. They might go extinct because of this because of this hostile race of aliens. And yeah, pinatala ni Jin dun ang, ang Gather Arc team to well to, to work closely with the Dinosaur Empire. So they made that courtesy call to Emperor Gore and of course leading it off was Kamui and well, they've, been, they've been shown their accommodations and the usual diplomatic pleasantries while this was going on who reappears Black Getter mm. fan service <laughs> it's been uh, decimating the Andromeda Federation since he came back and one stalker he knows them with Gather Beam and the other he um he slashes his way through their ranks wala siyang pinubuhay wala rin siyang sinantong alaman at wala rin siyang tinitira para sa mga kasama niya 
But anyway, that's that's Shin Gather for you. But strangely, strangely enough, the one piloting Duck Gather is Go. A Shin Gather, pero hindi si Ryo mang pilot. How's that possible? But anyway, so what this was going on, Gor called for Kamui. Tumulta si Kamui. And kaya pala siya pinapunta ni, ni Emperor Gordon para mag-reunion sila ng nanay niya. In-explain ni, ni Emperor Gore na, uh, well, for, for, for years now, uh, human Saurian hybrids have been, uh, what's called this, have been engineered. And so far, Kamui is the most successful one. Now, he is the beacon of hope for uh, for the human world and the Saurians to um, to cooperate. Emperor Gor has promised a uh, an esteemed position to Kamui if his performance against the Andromeda Federation is successful. He will be promoted to uh, what you call this Grand Marshal of the Dinosaur Empire. So he's a bit elated. It's Kamui. I don't know what Gore whispered to Kamui. There was no spoken words for it. So when Kamui came came out of the um, of the of the Emperor's Garden, the escort suddenly said, uh, was suddenly insisted that uh, he would that he'd uh, accompany Kamui elsewhere because. There are some people who want to, who would like to meet him, who would like to meet him. So, I'm gonna see Kamui. So, while this was happening, Baku and Takuma showed themselves to, um, to, to the place they're in, of course, in the dining area. Mapakai. Mata nakakatawa dito. Nagana pa ng convenience store food si Takuma. Ay, nako. Well, they were able to meet another human in in this place. He's a scientist named Ron. Ron Schweitz. Pinadala siya ng, ng UN dun sa Dinosaur Empire to work closely with another scientist who's, um, what's called this, who is, um, Closely connected to Emperor Gore III, yung, the current emperor. Now, and si Ron has a special connection to Shin Getter. Kinuwen tunya kela Takoman Bako. He was one of the last persons to to see Shin Getter and its uh, and its team pilots alive. I say right at that moment, put up on Mars si Shin Getter. Along with those enemies that it has absorbed during the opening scene, it even absorbed a, a Soviet nuclear missile. So, mga na overload, and it had to dispose of it somewhere. So, din decide nila nila Ryoma na puta na ng Mars para siguro don it dispose yung mga inabsorb nila. Shit gather was never seen again until. In this episode, or at least in the last episode, pero uh, in this episode, it reappeared as the Black Getter. Just like complicated na situation. Final scene: Kamui was led by this uh, by this escort to a uh, to a rather dark place. Who who this escort leaves him to? Three other Saurians. Who made a uh, you can say a cameo appearance in one scene where in uh, kumakain yung mga art team. Well, it looks like he is a bit familiar with these three mukhang mukhang mga kakilala ni Kamui to. So let's break it down ARD style. Pace. The pace is rather dense almost all throughout the episode. Why? Kasi I mean, I'm not denying that there is still animosity between the humans and the Saurians. In exhibit, ito 
你打我吗？不，我要 know who， 我要 know， 呃 ，that the the only Saurian he trusts right now is Kamui。那是，干什么喊呀？对 ，based on what we what we saw in this episode， the armistice is a bit fragile。We don't know how this how this current emperor thinks。We hey, General Bat, you you or OG get a robo fan still remember him? Yep, he made an appearance here, but he is now old and senile. And maybe na awang asa kanya niya si ano eh? Si si na tao matbako, si matanda na eh, how how wheelchair na eh? The pacing always picks up when, of course, when an OG getter. Made his made his re and、uh, yeah made his reappearance in this episode. Yeah, see、si、Black Gather. Wow, did he make an impact? The pacing was rather enjoyable. Cause another fan service moment has been served by this anime. See、si、Gather Black, and of course, well, a bit see、si、General Bat. I remember it vividly in、uh, in the first Gather Robo series. That I got. Almost every time the the first em- the emperor there sent a、uh, a giant giant monster against the gather team, Jiang Sumasama, the general bat. So he has seen、uh, nearly all of the exploits of of all the gathers. He's seen it all, but he's, right now he's really old and really senile. So, si Nami ngano ni mismo ni kamo yeh. He's grown old and senile, guys. So,、uh, don't believe every word he says. Pero sinabi naman ni Baku. Let's just listen to the guy. He's gonna awasha. Pero before they could really lend an ear to the old guy, he was、uh, taken away by the emperor. The pacing will make you realize that. Kaya ng you've seen General Bat in this episode. Ako na awaw eh, being a.、Uh, Being a former adversary of of the Getters,、eh, well, naawal, naawal ni bil bilang fan ng anime nato. Throw na man. First gear shift is the opening scene. Buti na lang ay talk notes. It sets off the episode, and we now have a clear idea as to what happened, what actually happened to Shin Getter. Why did he dis? Why did it disappear? Why did that? Team of pilots disappear. Yung ganon pala. Nase, Shin Gather has the ability to absorb,、uh, basically to absorb objects. There was a rogue Soviet missile that was、uh, that was launched recklessly against the、um, yeah, by the way, it looks the dinosaur empire. Hindi naman alam ng hindi naman alam nila Shaw Tachibana na kung ano ang magiging impact nito after it explodes kasi Soviet made kaya well as you know as you all know historically guys if it is Soviet if the weapon is Soviet made it's more of the to whom it may concern caliber <laughs> so pumunta ka kana ng ang Shin Gather team don para inutralize and the only way they know how is to absorb it so yun na inabsorb ni Shin Gather and with all these、um, these these monsters on this part of the dinosaur empire they got no choice but to absorb them as well total they're at it na yun na absorb and kung magaparang overloaded na so the Shin Gather team decides to Fly out to Mars to dispose of these things. Ata na kaki tano yan sila si Ron. So he was one of the one of the one of the last people to ever witness、uh, the Shin Gather team alive until now. That's what this ge- gear shift will make you realize. Second gear shift is of course Black Gather's reappearance. It's an obvious gear shift because, well, it completely changes the complexion of this war with the Andromeda Stellaration. Because one of the most OP versions of Gather Robo has finally made an official reappearance as Black Gather. Nakas, wow! I 
I tell you, this version of Ghetto Robo is really OP. Although I haven't seen, uh, I haven't seen fully uh, Shin Ghetto Robo, because we all know that Ghetto Robo Art is the official spin-off of Shin Ghetto Robo. And wow, talagang wala siyang tinira para sa mga kakampi niya. Inubos ni Black Gather ang mga kalaban. Even uh, preferably telling one of uh, one of the Andromeda, one of the Andromeda Generations generals, uh, basically to go fuck themselves. Ginetter pinya ang embodiment nito. Now that's how uh, that's how the Getters do business. Final gear shift. It's of course the final scene. So. Sira po itong tatlong Sorians na ito na parang kilalang kilala ni Kamuy. Bakit siya naman pinatawag ng tatlong to? Do they have this much political leverage na pinatawag nila sa escort ito si Kamuy? Hmm. I wonder who these three are. Yung mukhang hindi gagawa na mabuti. If you could see their cameo appearance during one scene where uh, uh, kumakain sa I don't know if you can call it. Yeah, cafeteria for, for soldiers. So, kasi, bako nita ako mawili man, try Saurian food. Mukhang, mukhang, enjoy na enjoy nga sa pagkain si Taco, eh. So, uh, these three were observing the gather team. And, most particularly si Kamui. I never thought that they would actually have the court, uh, the, uh, the escort um, call for Kamui. Are these guys big shots? We don't know yet. So, these three gear shifts that I saw, especially the last two, yeah, they will make an impact in the second half of this anime's run. Tandaan guys, episode 7 is the midway point of this anime. Yeah. Looks like the situation is going to be more tense. In, at least in the next episode. Because, uh, based on the based on what transpired in the final scene, mukha mapapatrobol si, si Kamuy rito. Plot-wise. Pansyado. Because, well, the audience needed to understand what was going on. So, hence, the opening scene, which is uh, an intense backstory. And then, of course, they were switching... They were switching backdrops. Eh? So, from the Dinosaur Empire to the Battlefield. Dinosaur Empire, Battlefield. Especially to what, uh, what Black Getter is doing to the enemy. You really need to to iron the plot out really well, para hindi confuse ang ang audience or the viewers. The three, no, the two animation studios that collab for Gather Robo Art really did a really did a good job in uh, in plotting out this episode. I didn't lose focus, so talaga na hindi ako yung uh, goings on in this episode. Probably even the uh, the first time get the role viewer would uh, would completely get the uh, the entire episode. Yeah. Aisha, pace, flow, and plot. Yep, they all work together for this episode. Like, um, even the fan service moments. Like, uh, well, you could say that. Um, Get the Robo Art is also a fan service anime because they've been serving out uh, appearances from OG characters. And so, si General Bat na hindi ko na hindi ko na expect eh. Ang um, expect ko nito patay eh, by this by this timeline. But here he is, old but senile na and confined to a wheelchair. Because gan siguro ganon na siya katanda in dinosaur years. So. The Robo Arc Episode 7. Uh, 
I'm personally excited as to how Get the Robo Art will run now. Because based on what happened in this episode, both former adversaries are uh, are uh, calling it a temporary truce just to uh, just to take out the Andromeda Stellaration. Just goes to show you how um, how dangerous an enemy this one is. Because one of their generals is a former general of the Yaki Empire and we all know how how vile the, the Yaki Empire was uh, if you haven't seen Gather Robo G I strongly suggest you watch that that Gather series now para mangets nyo sinasabi ko regarding the Yaki Empire they were a far worse bunch than the Dinosaur Empire talagang um, hindi nila sinanto ang 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 mga getter pilots nun so much as to injure Jin and replace replace him with uh, with Sho pero huh, Sho Tachibana was up to the job kasi ang pinalitan niya isa sa pinakamagulang na getter pilot ng araw si Jin Hayato and, and he is talagang he is the resident um He's the resident criminal of the uh, of the uh, of the team. Because talagang uh, no araw kasi may criminal record si ano eh. May criminal record si Jin before he be, before becoming an esteemed scientist. Talagang he's all over the place criminally. <laughs> Lahat ng klaseng racket alam niya. And for Professor Sato, Professor Sato may to give him this uh well this this new lease on life. It means Professor Sotome has seen something special in him. Look at him now. He he has uh, he was the he was the one to complete Professor Sotome's final getter and getter arc. And wow, I've never seen Jin this um, this smart before. He is now. Uh, he is now commander of the new Satomi Lab and of course to command his own gather team Jin Hayato has gone a long way and even representing the human world too in signing the armistice between the humans and the Saurians uh, and the dinosaur empire that means something too so where will his leadership skills take him especially during the second half of this anime's run uh, it's still up in the air. Will the um, will the Gather Arc team's mission be successful? Will they be able to well, cooperate effectively with the Dinosaur Empire? And what are Gord the Third's true intentions with this armistice? Bottom line, Maka Lifestyle, I do not trust this Emperor. I trust General Bat even more <laughs> because he has respect for for uh, for Takuma's father as a warrior. That I will that I will trust even more. But I got the sinking feeling regarding uh, Emperor Gord the Third. Mo ulterior motives But that's just me. We'll have to. Uh, wait for at least the next episode to to figure things out regarding the dinosaur empire so again get the robo arc episode 7 
siya. Kawawang Kimi. And well, um, he seemed to have an eye condition. Dahil, you remember guys, when uh, they were we were trying to capture Hell. Dito siya naburo ni Hell. That affected his vision. So, it got worse during uh, those two weeks with Alicia. Pansin ni Alicia yun. They were able to find a place for Alicia, which is an orphanage. And of course, Siesta has fully healed. And yeah, nag-celebrate sila. At binigyan siya ni Alicia ng eye patch. <laughs> and medyo nagselos si Siesta. And that same night when uh, the two weeks of the two week recovery phase has, uh, has been up, she went tipsy. <laughs> Alam nyo, ibang siesta ang nakita ko sa episode na to. Nung, nung sinan talaga lasing siya. It was a totally different siesta I saw in, uh, in that scene. Talagang... Uh, She was talking nonsense and she was even tempting Kimmy to to sleep with her. Wow. <laughs> so the next day, she went full siesta on Kimmy. Ay, tutulukan pa naman siya ng, ano, ng, ng uh, watered down na drug na, na yung... No, pinigil na ng distribution ito. You remember that episode? That was, um, I think, episode 2 or 3. She tried using that on Kimmy. <laughs> Kasi ayaw niya talagang uh, maranda ni Kimmy yung ano, n- n- nangyari kagabi. Although, actually, wala namang nangyari sa kanila. Knock on the door game, it was, um, it was Alicia. So... That's when Alicia uh, gave gave Kimmy her gift of an eye patch. Yun. Medyo nagselos si, si Siesta doon. And while they were, uh, of course, taking a, taking a morning stroll, Fuubi called from Japan. Kinukumusta sila. At nagtaka si Kimmy. This is actually the final scene. So nagtaka si Kimmy. Wait. Andito ka lang tuloy sa gawa. Ba't kinukumos lang mo kami? Eh, nagtaka na si Fubi. Oy, I haven't seen you guys before since, uh, since I left that case with you at the church. So, sino yung Fubi na na nag-courtesy call sa kanila two weeks ago? So, nagtaka sila pareho ni Siesta. Let's break this down ARD style guys, shall we? Peace. It was all light moments nearly the entire episode. So anyway, uh um, after the final scene we can deduce that it was just the calm before the storm. Engi, the animation studio studio did it uh made they actually made a good call with this uh with the pacing of this episode. Kasi, The final scene said it loud and clear. There was a fake phobia amongst you two weeks ago. Hindi yun ang totoong phobia. At napansin naman ni Kimi na Teka, ba't nasa iyo yung lighter na binigay mo sa akin uh, a few days ago? Narecall ka agad ni, ni Kimi yun. He still has that lighter so he knows. And the pacing will make her realize that. It was an understandable pacing. I say, I think the enemy caught Kimmy and Siesta uh, during a time when they were relaxing. I say, well, Siesta is injured and Kimmy needed to babysit Alicia. Obviously, she's not 17. <laughs> Although she, she, she tells everybody that she is. Well, despite all of the calm, here comes the storm. Sino kaya yung yung Fuubi na yon na bumisita kila Siesta two weeks ago? Talaga nagtaka sila eh. Nagtaka sila tatlo. Siesta, Kimi, at saka si Fuubi. And well, again, the pacing made me realize that. Flow naman. 
first gear shift here is um it only came after the first half of the episode was ending yung um but when just was fully recovered and up to now they still haven't found the eye of sapphire eh yung pala mukhang ginago na, mukhang ginago sila ng ano ng uh so called this what's that organization but anyway um mukhang pinapahanap sa kanila ng ng organization na to yung eye of sapphire akala akala nila kasi yun ang yun yung device na makakatalo sa organization na to yung pala mukhang pinapan well this is what I realized nung pinapanakaw pa sa kanila ito parang gano'n ang lumalabas ngayon and this gearship made me realize that what we thought was a um a regular job yung pala um mukhang kinagago sila uli ng organization na ng organization na to led by hell final gear shift well only two gear shifts sorry it's the final scene this confirms my suspicion between this review of course mukhang kinagago sila ni hell so these two gear shifts that I saw yes will play a role down down the line for the rest of this anime na looks like uh, this backstory isn't over yet And we're slowly getting the idea of how Siesta died. There's a lot to expect. Definitely. Plot-wise, Malina sa plot. Because, well, uh, they spent the entire two weeks looking after this child na pinapost ni Siesta as her. And she looked she looked the part <laughs> and then really it really felt like the calm before the storm until the final scene came along yung pala well ginugoy na pala sila ng ginugoy na pala sila ng lahat ni hell that's what I've been that's what I just deduced the one who uh, probably appeared the fuubi that appeared before Siesta, Kimi, and Alicia two weeks ago was not actually hell, was not actually fuubi, fu- it's probably that shapeshifter friend of hell, hell has been duping Siesta and Kimi for two weeks na, they've been trying to look for this eye of sapphire thing na makakatalo sa sa spes yon spes na makakatalo sa spes hell is actually making these two look for it at mukhang nanakawin niya they're actually getting involved in a heist planned out by Spes for them pero pinapalabas ng Spes na na utos ni Fuubi ito that uh, this Eye of Sapphire is the one thing that will uh, that will put Spes out of business eh naniwala naman To, uh, to, to, to my surprise naniwala agad sa siesta the final scene uh, proved to us all that siesta is pissed off now you see that look on her face during the final scene yeah she is pissed off mukhang mukhang ginago siya na space the plot uh, was that clean it'll make you realize it it'll make you see it right away that Spes has been working, uh, has been duping the tandem since uh, for two weeks now. Pace, flow, and plot. Yep, they came together for this episode. So, the detective is already dead. Episode seven. You're probably asking guys, JJ, bakit two thumbs up? Eh, wala namang masyado nangyari. I'm gonna tell you why. Well, if you deep dive into the entire episode, you know that Spes has been taking siesta and Kimi 
for fools. Siguro sinamata nila yung Alicia situation. And they, uh, they had an agent of theirs post as Fuubi. Sinab- at pinasabi nila dun sa fake Fuubi na well, ganito, ganito. Uh, this Eye of Sapphire thing is going to uh, can put stress out of business. Probably not the case. They are probably making Kimmy and Siesta steal this Eye of Sapphire for their own interests. Kasi, well, after after that battle talagang well hindi na sila makapagpapa sa Europe so they're not doing it in Japan and the heart the uh, the heart uh, harvesting incident the story yeah it's just a story at naniwala naman agad sila Kimi at Siesta much to much to Siesta's disliking if you would read Siesta's mind sila sabi niya siguro na Mukhang ginago tayo ng mga patangin ng toa. That's why I gave it the two thumbs up. Because, well, it's a detective anime all over again. So after, um, after a bunch of comic reliefs for, for nearly the entire, for nearly, well, for more than the first half of the episode, here they are again. It's a detective anime again. And it's that serious space. is rearing its ugly head again. At hindi pa ganong karegovered si Siesta. For the way I see it, we're going to see how Siesta died in the next few, um, probably in the entire second half of the run. Because, well, I fully understand what Engie, what Engie's point is. This case probably killed Siesta. And it's only right for this backstory to extend. I said, para siguro para ma fully grasp ng ng view ng mga viewers on why um, on how dangerous an enemy space is. That even after Shasta's death, they would still uh, they would still go at it. This episode will probably make probably give you a full understanding of how dangerous an enemy space is. So again, the detective is already dead. Episode 7. The title of the next episode has been teasered. So we're going to find out on uh, how this case is going to go down. Yeah, wait for next week and watch the next episode. That's the drill. In the meantime, a lifestyle. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Another funny story for us. All right, so, kaya ito nangyari, Jen. Alice has taken the initiative of uh, of finding ways to to help the Duke break his curse. They resorted to a magic talking pot. Then to uh, a, a certain jump scare method, which which eventually ended up scaring the shit out of the Duke. <laughs> Both of them were failures, and the Duke got actually got something positive out of this. Nagbanding sila ni ano uh, ni, ni Alice. Final scene. Well, it concerns one of the um, one of the methods. Both the Duke and Alice found to to possibly break the curse. It is the book Alice in Wonderland, which got them into a dream sequence wherein whoa, the Duke can finally touch Alice. Major killing moment. So they were, according to uh, the books, Alice, the character, the main character, don. They have to they have to capture the White Rabbit with the uh, with the. With the, with the watch. So, they went out, pero medyo na-distract sila. They went, um, they went full lovey-dovey. <laughs> At nagalit sa kanila yung, nagalit sa kanila yung Alice sa book. And, well, basically told the Duke to go fuck himself. Another positive thing came out of, uh, came out of all of this. Sabi ng Duke, 
Sige, patutulo na lang ulit ako. At least doon, nakakawa ko si Anis. Let's break it down ARD style, shall we? So, pace. Pacing is moderate because well, they were they were looking for ways to to break the Duke's curse. You cannot help but uh, you cannot help but laugh at it because ano yun, all three of the methods they 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 they, they found uh, they found here it ended hilariously. You wouldn't call uh, you wouldn't call that either fast or slow because may romantic moments, may comic moments and hindi man action packed eh. so you can so kaya it had a moderate pace but just right for just right for for this episode you get what I'm saying mga kalayos that the pacing was the pacing was really good flow naman first gear shift here was the talking pot nakala nga nila nila Duke at ni, at ni Alice that they had a breakthrough because It came with the um, with a recipe book. There was a recipe there for a potion that can break any witch's curse. So, you know, yeah, they, so they they followed the recipe to the letter. Then when it then the time came for the Duke to to drink it, major uh, tastes like hell according to the Duke. So, tinesting nila kung ano ang Kumo ng rosa si Alice. Oh. Sige. Hawakan niyo to your grace. Hawakan. Matay. Sabi nga ng Duke doon, this confirms what uh, what what Dalit has what Dalit told them last episode. It is not a one of the mill curse. It was it was put on him by a high caliber witch. Who, who is now dead. Second gear shift was during that uh, when they were trying that job scare method. Akala ng Duke, he took down he he took down this painting of a woman crying tears of blood. Put it on a shelf. E nakita niya nagdun uli sa lugar na yun kung saan nakasabit yung painting na yun. And he thought Ano to? Eh ako mismo nag... Eh ako mismo nagtago ng painting na to ah! Eh yun pala, unbeknownst to him, binalik ni Alice at, uh, at na-observe naman ni Rob. Tanong ni Rob sa kanya, Teka, bakit mo binalik yung painting na yun? Hindi lang ganda to yun ah! Sabi ni Alice, Shhh! <laughs> Alice was dubbing him all along! They're hoping that this jump scare effect uh, what, they, what they call the suspension bridge effect would remove uh, the dope of this curse but nope final gear ship is when they tried on this um, this cursed song okay it's written in black paper so if the dope plays this to the letter up to the very end it'll probably break his curse. The Duke played it perfectly and even the ghost of the of the song's composer talagang dinulo siya. Dinulo siya ng dalawa ni Alice. He played it perfectly pero ang curse na na-break yung sa curse ng composer he finally released him from this world. Again, what do these three gear shifts tell us? Mga lifestyle. Simple. Both the Duke and Alice are not taking other steps specifically to remove this witch's curse on the Duke. The curse, that cursed book of Alice in Wonderland, that, that was hilarious. <laughs> that was outrageous. Although I did not count it as a gear shift kasi... Nah. Pero the first three, their first three tries at bringing the Duke's curse, yes, they are gear shifts. Kasi, parang ano eh, parang, may pag-asa eh. Okay? May pag-asa kung mag-break dito ang curse ng Duke. If you look at it initially, talagang, uh, you, you would cheer the Duke on eh, in taking on this uh, this method. So, that's why I called these three gear shifts. Dahil, mukhang 
nakaka-breakthrough eh. Especially the first one. Especially the first and last one. Kung magkaka-breakthrough ang, ang dude dito. But, total failure. But, it was a start. So, if there's anything else that these three gear ships tell us, it's, well, it's a start. It's a start. Plot-wise, malinis mga ka-lifestyle. Kasi, although it's three, and then four different scenes in one episode, isa yung, continu- isa yung continuity na sinusunod eh. The fact that the Duke and Alice are now taking other steps to remove this curse. It still follows that continuity. It's still keeping the viewer focused on that. Kaya sinabi kong malinis ang plot. It's that, that same continuity of uh, of them taking other steps to remove the curse. Andun eh. They did not veer away from that continuity. Despite having, you could say, four stories in one episode. Kaya, malinis pa rin ang plot. Base, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. So, The Duke of Death and His Maid, episode 7. Deserve niya. Two thumbs up! There's a life lesson to be learned in this episode of The Duke of Death and His Maid. You wanna know what that lesson is, mga kalaisan? Simple lang! No matter what stumbling blocks you encounter, if you truly believe in the goal, you will achieve it. E kaysa namang magmukmuk na lang ang two sa isang tabi, knowing that his curse was put onto him by an elite witch that is now dead, and him now having a 99.99% chance of not breaking this curse, but through Alice, he's he well he's still motivated in 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 still breaking this curse, motivated by in Duke, and uh, of course through through Alice's encouragement. Kaya, no matter what, uh, no matter what hindrances you may encounter, if you really believe in your goal, ma achieve mo. So that's the lesson you will learn from this episode. Deep dive. So again, The Duke of Death and His Maid, Episode 7. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime, Mama Lifestyle. And I'm recording this from my phone. Good morning. Title of the next episode has been teasered. Kaya, again, I have trust issues with teasers. Kaya, you know the drill, mga kalaistad. We wait for next week and watch that episode. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest.